Because you've got powerful not... legs. How do you get the physique? Was it gym or how do you get the physique? Um, I've always been that. She's actually not got powerful legs. Do you shower in your dressing room? Do you have a shower on the day of a fight or not? Tell us about the tattoos. Shut the fuck up, oh, you yeah. little prick. But then I've got the phoenix. Hey, prick. So I'll take it from Bob every day of the week. An absolute disgrace. I just your know it'll mind. Move him out of here, that there. Ricky had to go over for his fighter because he risked getting abducted and sold into sexual. I never said that. <laughs> Both have been rape victims. I'm not watching Frank Boogley only <laughs> live on Saturday night. <laughs> Go to your mind. Jesus Christ, get yourself a life. He's actually a uh, priest. Yeah, yeah. It's because his brother John Fury eye gouged him. What have I told you all this time? He's going to end up sucked out, fucked out, looking for a handout. Boxing, um, Natter's messenger group. Oh, they're going to, oh, I'm going to be the king. Jay Bump, you know what I'm saying? Well, hello everybody and welcome to the 551st edition of the Boxing Asylum Nutters podcast. I'm your host, Steve Wellings, and joining us on the call, we have Matty DiGelonardo and Andy Patterson going live on YouTube from 8 o'clock every Sunday evening. The ad-free Patreon RSS feed updates shortly after the show concludes. Hello to everyone listening through the week on Apple Podcasts, Spotify and Sports Social. Don't forget to leave a review on the podcast player of your choice. That the entire month of December, nothing less than five stars is acceptable. We are into December now, 2023. Christmas is closing in on us and so is 2024. What is it? Shorter of breath and one day closer to death. I sound a bit closer to death tonight. Uh, the, uh, the throat's a bit scratchy, which shouldn't affect us on an audio medium like this. We should all be fine. Shouting last night, no doubt, at the Michael Conlon card in Belfast SSE Arena. We'll be coming to that shortly. Bit of Nathan Gorman as well, getting his shorts taped up, Channel 5. Gavin Gwynn on Friday night. Hackett, Pro Box TV. Next week, Chris Billum-Smith's on. We'll be previewing that one. Pro Grey Haney. And also, Rabizi Ramirez. He's in action it's in Texas, maybe, I think he is. Same place, Matty, as Ryan Garcia was in action last night against Oscar Duarte Hurado. We'll just call him Oscar Duarte for now. They said before the fight, Duarte was going to struggle because he was a little bit slow. He likes to stand stationary and let his shots go. For that to happen, you also have to stand in front of him for him to be effective. Ryan Garcia managed to move, 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 which was his modus operandi last night. Don't stand there to be a target and you should be able to get the job done, which is exactly what he did. Yeah, he. Uh, there were some times he chose to trade there and uh, and then uh, Duarte kind of started coming on in the fifth, sixth rounds. And then uh, Garcia decided to box a little bit and... Uh, he was looking, you know, like, eh, maybe he might not be able to make the finish line. Maybe Duarte can uh, can get to him. He was landing some decent shots. Uh, Garcia was kind of doing a weird defensive move to get behind his shoulder, and it just seemed very open for a double left hook in that position, which uh, Duarte did catch him with at a couple of moments. But then just uh, catches uh, Duarte coming in and uh, and then kind of lands a flurry down Duarte goes and uh, he was kind of up at about nine and a half but that was enough for the ref and he called it um, I think he was given more time than Malik Scott um, <laughs> so uh, he's got that going for him and I didn't know if it was necessarily unfair uh, Duarte's a little bothered but I think he pushed it as far as he could uh, in, in getting up there but uh, Garcia looked looked all right he's, he's he's still punching good that was at a 140 43 uh, catch weight. Um, he called out Raleigh. I could easily see him beating Raleigh. Um, Oscar says he'd like to match him against the pro Gray Haney winner. We'll see. Uh, but it, it was a, it was a pretty good performance uh, from Ryan where he, he fought a little. He boxed a little. 
Um, but I just um, I, I can't say I'm tremendously high in his prospects at the top level going forward. I just don't think I saw um, what you'd be wanting to see from a fighter at that level. Uh, that, well, the level that he believes that he is at, I'll say. He's a hard man to please, is Matty. And uh, this was uh, Garcia's first fight since getting destroyed to the body oh, by Javonta, Javonta Davis. Uh, he picked up on something. That weird side-on movement that Garcia was doing. I noticed that quite early on as well. The referee wasn't really wise to it. He kept blaming Duarte for hitting him around the back area. But that's all that Garcia was pre presenting. It was, it was a bit of a shoulder roll at first. It became a, a, an all-round turnaround. Chris yeah. Mannix seemed to think he was protecting the body post Javonta Davis. If that's the case, then a couple of things come to mind. First of all, you can't get away with that every fight going forward. And secondly, people are going to think, whoa, hold on a minute. This guy's glass to the body, man. <laughs> he's, he's, he's hiding something. Or, well, not really hiding. We've all seen it. But he's yep. definitely weak. He's definitely a, an obvious weakness. Why on earth was he doing this move? Well, I said to you guys in the chat earlier on this morning when I seen it, it was complete poverty, that, that shoulder roll. I mean, it really was. And then when you say it was a complete turnaround movement, like literally turning his back on the situation. He's complaining about shots behind the head. Might have been some kidney shots and that as well. Maybe he was complaining about. But at the end of the day, he, he got the win. That's that's first and foremost. I'd, I'd say his power is pretty much legit. He even got up and weight. That's another thing, actually, the weight. I mean, as Aussie's said here before, what breeds good habits is, like, you know, your weight. Sticking to championship, you know, weight limits, and that, that, that breeds good habits. He's come in at 143. He demanded 143, I think, as well. So I don't know what that's about. But as I say, he got the win. He still got the kind of star drawing power, as, as evidenced by some of the, the fans there last night. There was a bit of boon in that as well. A lot of Duarte support, though, I think, because of the Mexican Possibly, contingent aye. over the border, probably, yeah. Duarte, again, that that, that that was not that was not a performance I was expecting for him, actually, in that as well. You know, he said nothing up, he walked into distance, he's trying to shimmy himself with he, he, into distance. He was doing nothing. Every time, he moved, his, every time he moved his feet, he couldn't get shots off. So he had to wait to get his feet set, and then by that time, as you say, I think Matty says, Garcia was using his feet, he was dancing around, running about the ring, no one engaged, really, and just kind of like picking his shots, type of thing and that, but it's the bit I agree with, 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 with Matty on is, you know, his long-term prospects. Well, for me, his prospects is this. It's, it's cherry-picking for this point, and he's picking fights with, with Oscar and Bernard Hopkins. You know, if he gets his wish and gets becomes a free agent, who, who's, who's he really going to be aiming to fight? Because even the champions, even the title holders, I would not fancy his chances against, OK, we've got pro grade fighting next week, so we'll just leave him out of the equation. But... Put him in Matias, you know, like, like like he was fighting there last time. Matias, what's Matias? I <laughs> oh, love it, Andy. Up? Body on the record, man. Liking that thinking. Well, second body on the record, mate. <laughs> um, once, once, as you, as you say, with, with that stupid turn he was doing there last night, all someone's got to do is find a good left hand and he is on Queer Street immediately. So as I say, first point forward, it'll be cherry picking, it'll be padding the bank account, it'll be padding his record because, let's, let's be honest, I thought, I, thought, I thought he looked awful, you know, as I say, the power's there. It looked okay in terms of movement and thing, but this 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 moment when he gets into a firefight or in, in quarters battles, that he's you know the way he's doing it, it's just no, it's just not working out for him. So for me, it's not honest. It'll be as much money as he can get going forward, little resistance as possible, and again, stay away from the legit bangers and the legit fighters at at one forty. Um, and the weight is going in terms of what he's doing with the weight, you know, i.e. catch weights. I wouldn't be surprised to see him up at 147 this time next year, the weight is going in that as well. So, too much talk. Well, there is a lot of talk in these days, but there isn't enough fighting in that as well, especially kind of enough enough fights that's going to get him the, 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 the required, you know, discipline and, you know, education and... Just the experience that he needs to be fighting at this top level because a lot of it, again, it's just IG fight, Instagram, you know, training and all this type of crap. He's got, you know, another trainer, I believe now. I forget how many he's got now at this point. As I said, he's Derek James, three James, third and three games. Joe Goosen he's, before. And, yeah. and he, he says he's picking fights with, with his promoter. He's got any legal issues with his promoter, I believe. I think there's some sort of legal dispute going on there as well. So, yeah, well, he instructed his lawyer, didn't he, to draw up papers for them but yeah, like you said there Andy about building him and improving him and moving him into positions surely the likes of Oscar and Hopkins now know for he's going to be away like a shot which, which begs the question why Garcia signed the contract extension in the first place but they're not they can't build him towards anything they're gonna to have to try and quote-unquote cash him out which is why I think the likes of fighting guys like Rolando Romero 
big pay-per-view, sells money. They both talk absolute shit. They're both relatively popular in their own yeah. sort of niches. It's going to be fights like that, isn't it? Now, Oscar's going to look to try and get his money back as best he can before Ryan jumps ship. Well, he's going to try something at least. As I say, if, he, if he's legit about trying to get these fights made, you know, cross promotions, and he's going to reach out to the likes of Al Heyman and that and try and get Roy, you know, Romero and Matias, so to speak. Um, I'm just trying to bring up the rank and see, see if we can find where Garcia actually ranks. So there he's ranked four with the WBA, seven with IBF, and seven with WBC. Well, so Interestingly, Andy, fight. as well, he's number five with Boxwick, and number four in Boxwick is Arnold Barboza Jr., who apparently has now signed with Oscar and was mm. supposed to be on that card last night. So there obviously, there's obviously maybe a bit of a move being made there, possibly. Either way, someone's got to do something with Barboza. He's 28-0. He's been with Bob most of his career. He's had no big fights, which is unfortunate because he's a decent fighter. But the fact he's so close to Garcia in the rankings there, maybe they're working a little bit of a move there, possibly. 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 But I, I think if they're going to... What's, what's the contract length again? I mean, again... If it's like two, three years long and that, then you could maybe sit him on the shelf. That, but he's, he's as I say, he's, he's too much a star for him in terms of like what he can draw in. So he's, there's no point shelving him. Barbosa would probably make sense. I'm just trying to see if any other names are kind of like cross promotions. I mean, we mentioned Jose Ramirez, I think, last week, potentially being an ideal opponent for someone. He's on the verge. I was listening to somebody being interviewed, I can't remember who it was, and they mentioned a possible opponent for Ramirez. And the interviewee, again, this is great stuff, I can't remember it well, said, oh, Ramirez is sitting out, he's waiting for a title shot. Right now, he's a, he's on the verge of one being signed. It's got to be Lopez, But, but I don't it? know against who, it, 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 quite possibly, yeah, quite possibly. It's got to be Lopez, yeah, it's got to be yeah. Lopez, eh, mate? Mm -hmm. It could be. Um, Ryan Deal's here, uh, thankfully. He's thrown in five New Zealand dollars. He says, O'Hara Davis being held in Guantanamo Bay, getting waterboarded for information. <laughs> On the whereabouts of Rick Graville, allegedly. <laughs> yeah. O'Hara Davis against Barroso. Andy was supposed to be the fight over the weekend. Barroso made it into the country. Poor old O'Hara didn't. Yeah, He's in, missed in Guantanamo. Yeah, I missed that as I say, as I mentioned to you guys today, actually. And it's just like so the, the legacy of Mr. Kinahan is hanging over Mr. O'Hara Davis and that. So, uh, yeah, because that was Davis's big chance. And it was a, um, certainly it was a winnable fight for him as well. So he's. Uh, he must have known that was going to be an issue the way, but then again, he's not the brightest spark in the house, is he? No, should come on here with us. Had a chance to win a fucking interim belt against a guy who was three quarters of the way to his nation's life expectancy. I mean, it's fucking right there for the taking. <laughs> Case probably think... good news. <laughs> he's outlived that life expectancy, I think, hasn't he? And Michael Thompson says, must have been some uh, check hook. Ryan hit him with, didn't want any more after that. It was a great shot by Garcia. I'll give him his due, man. The shot he caught. Duarte walked right onto it. It was, it was an absolute uh, He did a wee dance and that as well. Yeah. And he, posted, he, he, he did that usual thing. I'll wait till nine, then I'll make sure I, I try and get up. It's just a <laughs> fraction too late, but I'll make it look like I want to keep fighting. It's the ones you don't see coming, Andy, and the speed Garcia threw, uh, that all of his faults. It was a cracking finishing shot, I thought. Plus, he kind of slightly walked on it a little bit, which really takes the force and the surprise as well. So, uh, yeah, as I say, once, once he got stood up by that shot, it was just a matter of, oh, you know, Garcia cut loose and just make the, uh, make the ref, you know, force the stop as you well, count him out, basically, at, this, uh, at that rate. But, yeah, he didn't want any more once he felt that power. And that's the one thing as well that Garcia is going to have, but he, you know, again, you can't fall in love with that power. Um, and, you know, there's cl clearly the rebound of defensive issues need to be worked out on as well. If that's his uh, plan, you know, this this all day type, you know, fucking shoulder roll that he's trying to learn on that, it's just not going to cut the distance because someone's going to find a left hand just running about the side and that and catch him square, and that's going to be him. Mm -hmm. I, I really believe. He, he, I really believe if 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 he was managed properly, he could go through the rest of his career without having you know, much issues. But it's when he's got to actually face the you know, the legit test, the legit hitters, and that, I think he's going to come really unstuck. Still stands with his chin in the air to it as as well, actually. So. Michael Thompson says, when Ryan loses his reactions and speed, eventually it'll be game over for him. He has stepped up against Davis. He wasn't on Davis's level. He got stopped. We all know he's an Instagram star. He brings the sort of teenage girl demographic to boxing. But he is a decent fighter. I think that that was a tough fight for him, to, for Golden Boy to give him. Some people are even saying, oh, they wanted him to lose, which, they, I don't know, Oscar doesn't even know what time of day it is half the time. But I thought that was a good win. And the way he finished Duarte as well, he could have easily stayed on his bike and gone the distance and just about sneaked by. So I'm going to give King Roy a pat on the back for that one. Uh, other people, Matty, aren't so uh, fussed. You might have seen this earlier. 
in the boxing nutters group. Let me just get rid of Michael Thompson there. No offense, Michael. Uh, Kalik's boxing trying for years. For trying <laughs> number two for years. says, <clears throat> "Excuse me, Matty. Ryan Garcia is Victor Ortiz 2.0. Explosive enough to put guys like Duarte away. Not skilled or focused enough to beat top tier fighters. Way too flawed. It's gonna be what it's gonna be." <clears throat> Excuse me. He'll beat Raleigh because Raleigh sucks. Likely plucks off a low-hanging belt at some point, but really bad losses are in his future. You can see it from a mile away. He'll have his fair share of opportunities due to popularity, but red flags all over the place. So I think that's actually a pretty accurate description and fair. I, I, I think in some ways it is, but I will say that I think Ryan, you know, he might have his mental health bitches and whines, but I do think he's a little bit more headstrong than than Victor. You know, after the uh, the Davis loss, he wasn't in there saying that he didn't deserve to take such beatings and things of that nature. So I, I, uh, you know, I, I think there's there's something that that will keep him from being in the upper echelon of the sport. But uh, I don't necessarily I think that he's some sort of a fucking head case fucking wacko like like Victor was. I mean, he was a really special uh, talent in that way. Like, and it, what kind of got me with him. You know, the fight, the fight of his that really got under my skin was the uh, Lamont Peterson fight where he somehow managed to find a draw in that fight, despite dropping Peterson like three times. And again, it's just like there's that kind of killer instinct was missing. And it's a shame because I mean, that guy, I mean, not only did he have just fucking thunder in that left hand, his right hook was fucking mean too. Um, it, it's a fucking shame that, that, that he, uh, uh, couldn't just bite down a little bit more cause, cause he definitely had some fucking skill and power. Yep, skill, power, speed. People were comparing him uh, to Oscar, saying he was going to be the new Oscar at one point. But unfortunately, it didn't quite work out for him, uh, thanks to Kalix boxing there. Back he needed, from, from the court, I guess yeah. he just needed the cocaine that he forgot. <laughs> well, he maybe get to that. <laughs> he maybe get to that. Uh, Rob, we're talking Ryan Garcia, knocking out Oscar Duarte. What's in Ryan's future, do you think? Could it be Raleigh? Could it be Arnold Barboza? Could it be shaving his hair off and growing a beard? I can't see that. It's his fucking fan base if he fucking crack it up if he gets <laughs> gets rid of the the hair and all that. Like, I'd say keep him away from anyone that can fight based on the the performance last night. And that's not to take anything away from Garcia because I think we need Garcia. Like, but we just need him to be a little bit better. If Garcia was a little bit better, he could be he could save the sport to a degree because he's got the YouTube viewership. But he's the pro. He's the legit pro boxer, like that's come through the amateurs and all that. Like you know what I mean. So I think they fast tracked him a little bit. I think he got left hand happy earlier in his career, and I think he made a lot of money too early, which maybe inflated his own uh, self fucking whatever the fuck you would say. Um, his or his own self worth. Yeah. Uh-huh. And he was renegotiating contracts before he'd ever really done anything in the ring, like um, with Golden Boy. There's obviously a fractured relationship between him, Oscar, and uh, Bernard Hopkins. So I like him. Like, I like Assi. I, I, I kind of wish he hadn't had that period of inactivity. I don't know what the fuck was going on there, but I'm highly, highly, highly skeptical of guys that are tra- changing trainers every five minutes. This fella's been with Renault, so now to Goosen, uh, to Derek James. And despite Chris Mannix fucking with his balls in his mouth, basically, for the commentary, I didn't really think that there was any marked improvements from Garcia last night. Okay, he's a little bit on the stick. I think Jer- James is trying to have him fight like the third Charlo, Jarmul Charlo, the nobody lesser known. Um, <laughs> he was standing but, up in between rounds, Rob. What do you think of that as a strategy? <laughs> that's that's a lot of shite as well. Like, he doesn't stand between. Just take the fucking race like everybody else. Like, I don't I don't know what about that. Let's try to prove something. It's but I guess the guy, like... Duarte, like it doesn't, it's not really saying much, you know that way. Duarte offered nothing, he walked forward. Um, but he, even by walking forward, he was making him look uncomfortable in certain stages, his head straight up in the air still. Nobody's taking that out of his game with the three trainers that he's been with. And he was doing a strange, strange imitation of a shoulder roll. And I think Derek James even said to him, stop doing that shit, you're not Floyd. Something like that. Like, stop fucking stop with that shoulder roll. Like, he's turning his back and coming out. So, I think a proper fighter would take his head off. But him versus Raleigh, fun fight. Him versus O'Hara Davis, fun fight. Both fights that he could win just off the left hook alone, probably. And, you know, he talks the talk. He can sell fights. He doesn't really necessarily have to walk the walk. You just get him in well matched fights, make him look good, and keep keep the money rolling. If I was, you know, the person calling the shots for him, and then down the line, he's shown like he's not afraid to fucking. He stepped up to fight Tank Davis, fucking came down to weight and everything. Had a period of inactivity and went straight to Davis in the fight. Didn't work out for him, but and he didn't offer much in the fight apart from 
looking wild with the left hook and looking for the left hook all night. And I, th- I think he's the type of person that doesn't listen. I saw a little bit of footage with Linares and him together. And Linares is making suggestions like that maybe... You know, maybe you try, maybe you try to throw something different on the left hook. He's like, I like the left hook, but maybe why did you try double jab left hook? Something like this. You know what I mean? He's like, uh huh, uh huh. Like, don't think he's <laughs> um, so th- I think I think he has yet to find the best version of him, and I don't know with everything going on with him, just the sheer fame and uh, money and adoration and all that he has. I think he's kind of skipped a lot of the steps um, that make champions. So he's a big ticket seller. He's a good look for the sport if you can get him in good fights. He's exciting. I think he comes to fight. He's not the best, but we'll take him. Do you know that way? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, yeah, I yeah. think that's a fair assessment. You know, the problem with that shoulder rule, Rob, is he wasn't like, you know, turning the right hand over into it. He was just keeping the static position. Like, there was no nuance to it. Yeah, it was he just got there and move, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, you're just a sucker for the left hook sitting like that. It, 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 that, that style doesn't suit him. Like, he's, he's got height. He's big. He's 140. He's got long reach. Like, he should be fucking every. Uh, Lenares is right. You know, the advice he's giving him was great. Everything should be coming off a double jab and then setting that, setting that hook up rather than. He just throws the check hook like we're nothing behind it either. Like it's just like, come here, <laughs> missed you that time. Come here, I get you this time. <laughs> you know, there's no like kind of fucking set up to the shots. No real ring IQ. I don't think they're with him, but he can fight a bit. He's get he hopefully will get better, get more active, and bring the sport like bring those guys into big fights. Like fuck me, like you know, Asher Core Stevenson or Devin Haney take the hand off a fight off them for a fight with Ryan Garcia and uh, Tiafimo, any of the, these guys. Now they're all guys that I think have beat him, but. Him being involved in those contests is going to raise the profile of the fight. Look, look he at him can like be part of other people's stories almost. Look at him and Tank. Tank gets his biggest yeah. fucking pay- payday and makes point. himself yeah. a bigger yeah. star even yeah. from that fight. Like so, and he's willing to have the fights too. He's not, you know, he got to the press conference straight away last night. He's talking shit about Shakur Stevenson putting everybody to sleep in that. Like so, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Let's have it. Like, yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. Uh, Matty, you put this comment up, so we'll close on this before we go into the undercard for Michael Thompson. Uh, for the, anyone listening on podcast, he said that Garcia can definitely fight. I think opponents assume he's just a flashy social media star with only Instagram skills, but he's been well schooled. I, I would agree with that. Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, he does can't get to the level he's at without uh, you know something of uh, value. You know, Oscar didn't uh, didn't jump on signing him because he was without talent. Um, funny enough, there's a rumor going around that Oscar is Ryan Garcia's dad. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's totally fucking bullshit. But he that's probably funny. knows Ryan better than his own kids, so I mean, that's one. <laughs> that's what I said. It was a possibility, by the way. Oscar is, a, uh, Oscar is like dedicated to that craft, I can guarantee. <laughs> well, it, well, Ryan, Ryan's from Victorville, California, which is a uh, which is quite the shithole, as I understand it. It seems like the place that one might go to get a shitty motel and do a little Plenty bit of cocaine. Rats. Bit, and, it, rats, and, and, and as you'll recall, that is the uh, <laughs> the uh, the place where the infamous uh, Bob Sheridan taking out the biker gang in his Corvette story oh, yeah. uh, uh, came from too. So uh, maybe yeah, Bob I, Sheridan's really his father. <laughs> yeah. So I guess I guess to sum it up, I wouldn't fuck with Ryan because he's like hardcore street from fucking Wasn't, Victorville, V Town, bitch. Didn't, didn't Hugh Grant kind of like frequent that area in that way? But what was her name? Brown. Brown. Yeah. Oh, It'll be one for Dominic. Dominic likes to get school on the old school fucking punches, punchers from the past. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I flip me right off. That's it, bro. Oh, I something bro. That's it, just close to that, like that. That's that's there, right? I know we're going to digress now, right? So, very short, very quickly. Not on this show, show, Rob. You. Come on. <laughs> that just goes to show you that no man. Has the fuck because this motherfucker was a Hollywood movie star at dinner with Liz Harley. Decided, you know what? I'm just fucking going to go to the bathroom, guys. <laughs> Went outside on the street to try and fucking solicit a blowjob for himself. What the fuck, man? <laughs> what the fuck? God. Well, I mean, to be to be fair, Rob, like if if you're Liz Hurley, you wouldn't have to like try very hard in bed whatsoever. Like you're just you're lucky to be like within I inches would of love. Me. Yeah, she's a lace man. Would... I would love to see. Uh, exactly. I would love to see the the you know the then and now pictures of, of a two women by the way because I can guarantee <laughs> what was the age finest and it's no Mrs Brown. <laughs> Mrs Brown's voice. Forget, forget about Bud Crawford, man. Liz is pound for pound number one for me. I'll tell you that. Oh, much. I. <laughs> but maybe she's a pain in the hole. Do you know what I mean? Everyone says <laughs> yeah. that as well about PK or PK left Shakira. Maybe Shakira's a massive bitch. Who knows? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, sorry. Yes. No. No. That's fine. Uh, I feel like, well, I don't think we have deviated too much from Ryan Garcia into the world of celebrity. 
Into the world of the undercard, Matty. I don't know how much you saw of this. I'll go over it very quickly, though. Golden Boy, decent undercard. We were supposed to have O'Hara Davis against uh, Barroso. We've spoken about the visa issues. Arnold Barboza was supposed to be on the card. Didn't quite make it, unfortunately. Uh, the son of a legend, Shane Mosley Jr., got a sixth round retirement win over Joshua Conley. Not to be confused with Joshua Clotty. Uh, Floyd Schofield, he's decent. He went in against Ricardo Lopez, who said, I'm going to give him the toughest fight of his career. Mark my words. He got dropped four times and knocked out in the first round. So I don't know what Schofield's other fights were like. And then Darius Fulgham, 9-0 uh, with nine <clears throat> knockouts. Uh, Pacino Hill, not to be confused with Al Pacino there, Matty. Uh, did you catch anything of... Not an eagle battle, Scott, the other Schofield guy had, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's busy. <laughs> Go on, Matt. Yeah, I, uh, Fulgham, uh, he's an interesting prospect. Hopkins is really high on him. Uh, he, uh, he's already got a college degree. He's a registered nurse. Um, and, um, yeah, interesting guy. He, um, he seems to be really sharp, good head on his shoulders, um, which I think, uh, you know, really goes a long way, um, for, uh, just ma maximizing what what talents you have. So looking forward to seeing what Fulgham is, uh, does going forward. Um, and then, um, we'll hit on uh, Schofield real quick. He just demolished his opponent and put him down four times. Every time he touched him, just hurt him. Um, so, I mean, that doesn't tell you much about Schofield. Um, I would, you know, if they can't get these guys in with the, the champions, let's clear out some prospects and get us a Williams, a paid a Floyd Schofield fight, you know, come on, give us some love here. Um, that'd be an interesting one. And, uh, you know, Shane Mosley jr. Um, Conley, uh, has been the distance with a few decent fighters pretty mm -hmm. durable and uh you know mosley finding that over the top right hand to take him out of there um he uh it just landed a bunch on him, i think at the sixth or the seventh and uh and then conley uh just between rounds told his guys he just didn't have anything left but you know um uh, i'll tell you what mosley is he's He's kind of developed into a pretty decent little fighter and in a really weak middleweight division Given the right circumstances, I could see him picking up a title. Stranger things have happened. It is pretty weak at the moment. He's not a great talker, though, Matt. Did you see him trying to cut a little promo before with the, the girl interviewing him? My God, it was painful. Yeah, he uh, he definitely didn't get any of his dad's swagger. Unfortunately, he just got his mom's cuntiness, it seems. <laughs> he talks like his dad talks now. Shane was there. They're friends again. Yeah, yeah, everything's groovy in the Mo in the uh, the Mosley family right now, so that's good to see. Um, but uh, and apparently he's, uh, he's probably just fell out with that because he's sick of the dad having a new girlfriend every six weeks. Like, Fuck off, dad. Who's this one? Like, this is the love of my life. This is the you know what I mean. I've fucking I'd, seen this shit before. Hey, let me ask you, Rob. If I would you take a twenty dollar bet that Shane Mosley has never stolen pussy from his son? <laughs> I, like I if, if I gave you that bet, like would you take it or not? You know, I don't know. That's vice versa. I'd say, I'd say it's probably more likely the other way around <laughs> with the with the fucking the women saying senior goals for like I'd say that's probably more likely the other way around. Like yeah. yeah. So, uh, but yeah. Anyways, uh, glad to see the family back together. Whatever uh, trials and tribulations they might have been through, but uh, yeah, mostly junior onwards and uh, and upwards. And uh, his dad um, sounded a little bit punch drunk, but uh, doing okay, it seems. Yeah, he's doing okay. Good luck to the Mosley family as a whole. Uh, before we look in the chat and go on to Conlon and anything else, Andy on Friday night, Gavin Gwynn. Over in the York Hall, I didn't see any of the undercard. I did watch the main event, though, against the ageless Emiliano Marsili, 47 years of age. His future was ahead of him before his uh, right shoulder went out. Uh, one of the judges had Gwyn ahead. I thought Marsili was winning. Outrageous. His work rate was really good. And uh, the, the right shoulder, very much like myself, just put paid possibly to his career. And he's six years older than me as well. Not much going for him. Yeah, I, yeah, I thought he was doing pretty well. Actually, one of the, uh, one of the judges had him uh, had went up by two points. Uh, Marcelli, obviously, he's not got the power, and as I say, he's obviously, I was surprised that he, just, he didn't seem he was going to like he was going to fade five, six, seven rounds. I think Jesus, when Gwyn's going to have to, what he seemed to think he was going to do was like basically walk forward and just try and just like land shots, but. You know, Marcelo was just backing off, using every inch of the ring. He would let his punches go when when Gwyn was covering up, and then he wouldn't be there to take take the uh, you know any any counter shots or anything like that. 
the injury seemed to be pretty legit. I mean, you could see literally, like, I don't know if it was like a dislocated shoulder, yeah. but you could literally see something protruding at the top oh. end of his shoulder and that. It felt gutty for the guy in that because it did look like he was on the, he was on the way. But uh, let's check the judges' scorecards here again. 70, 74, 77, 75 to the Italian and then 77, 75 to Gavin Gwynn on the third card and that. So... I did, I did think a wee bit maybe the tide was slightly turning, mm-hmm. but we'll never know now, actually. And that. It did look like he was he was doing all he could just to kind of like even get to what was it, what, uh, round eight, round nine, whatever it was. But uh, it just wasn't to be. So he just he just never really got the chance to kind of capitalise after that Derry Matthews win either, uh, Marcelli. So shame, because it says he went on, I think he went on the road and won that European belt, possibly. Uh, or I think it was, uh, no, it was the vacant belt, sorry. So... Came across here, just wasn't it to be though. It, it says he was doing pretty well, but injuries happen. Injuries happen, well, yeah. Uh, go- Marcelli go- was 24 years old on 9 11. <laughs> Do you think he was involved? Highly likely. Highly likely. Might have been. Uh, Gwyn has improved. Um, he's improved enough to become the European champion. Uh, they were talking about his next moves, but I can't quite remember what they were. I've thrown in the stream yard link in the uh, in the chat there. So if anybody wants to come on and join us and talk about the fights, you are more than welcome. Talking about this fight, I was there last night. Uh, Take Ames was in the house. Uh, Dominic Henry as well took me, took my son. He was enjoying himself up with the revelers at the SSA Arena in Belfast. Michael Conlon. Uh, the comeback isn't going too well. Seventh round stoppage loss to Jordan Gill. A few of the boys, Rob, were talking about the stoppage and saying it was a little bit premature, it was a little bit early. From watching at ringside, I didn't think it was. Even though he was blocking, parrying a lot of the shots of the actual stoppage itself weren't landing, I think if you look at the context of that fight, look at the context of his career, the Wood fight took a lot out of him. The Lopez fight, absolutely crushing loss. The fact he was up in weight, the fact he can't punch, the fact he was every inch of his soul just to try and stay in that fight and box his way in. He was hurt numerous times. I was watching those legs, the, the hips and everything on Conlon were just going like jelly. There was something wrong with his legs, man. He was not holding the shots well. I, it, I'm going around the houses here to say I didn't disagree with the stoppage, man. I thought he could have got hurt in there. No, me neither. And um, I was saying this, like I, I didn't think he belonged up at 126. Um, and I was worried after, like, the Lee Wood knockout was so devastating. Like he went out of the ring and then landed on his head and half the arena thought he was dead. So to be back in, like I, I would have really, really from that point, uh, from that point on, I would have been more careful with him matchmaking and bringing him back along. I know he had a couple of uh, easier fights and then went straight back in with Lopez. But the, the, the manner in which he got ma- knocked out against Lopez was more concerning for me because the Lee Wood one, obviously like it was, it was, spectacular on the eye it was dramatic it was fucking hard to mouth stuff you're really worried for him but in that f- Lopez fight the manner in which he took the shot I just th- I thought he looked shook to the core and I thought I said this last week I think like my worry for him was that he stayed hit from the wood fight and now anytime he gets caught that his punch resistance is going to be gone and especially up the weight even though Jordan Gill is not known as a puncher he's carrying that extra weight to go up I just didn't, I just, I didn't like, I, I, I would have retired after Lopez fight, but obviously you can't tell fighters what to do. Fellas have their own ambitions and their own dreams and who the fuck are we to, you know, to tell them when to quit or whatever. And I think he's one of these fighters that was good enough to win a world title in the four belt era. And it just hasn't happened. Like, but there's no point trying to force it forever. He had a couple of cracks at it and getting getting stopped like that against Jordan Gill at home in Belfast, seventh round. Like and like you said, he was fighting for his life to stay in the fight. Like um and I like Mick, like you know what I mean? I like I, I think he's been like I, I tipped him to win a world title when he turned over. Didn't happen, but you know, he's been great for boxing in Belfast and best of luck to him if this is the end. Like but I don't want to see him get hurt either. You know that way like and I think the writing's on the wall when he's like once the second round once that once he got dropped so heavily in the second round I think oh f- I, well, I was expecting him maybe to have to overcome some adversity and maybe mm-hmm. come through the fire a little bit and hang on a little bit and, you know not look great or whatever but tough it out to get the win but when I saw him get dro- dropped so heavily in the second round I said fuck this is going to be a long night for him like I don't think he's getting out of this one and that's the other thing once he gets hit you don't see him coming back, don't you? Not like you just see you see it being one way from then on. Like once he gets hit, once that kind of once the leg and the, I I don't disagree with you, Steve. I think if you look at it closely enough, there's points even before the ref jumped in where his legs were completely stiff, completely stiff. So even though he was parrying shots, his fucking legs were gone. Like so, the ref. I think the ref was correct in his decision. It was a stoppage at the right time. 
Uh, yeah, Johnny says, when you're making Jordan uh, Gill look like a roadman killer, it's time to pack it in. I threw the StreamYard link out earlier, and Ahmed has availed of this opportunity. I don't recognise the name, but you're more than welcome on this Sunday evening. What do you want to talk about, sir? Ahmed, go ahead. What do you want to talk about? You there, Ahmed? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, go ahead. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I was, I was going to say, like, uh, yeah, Conlon needs to, I think, a rebuild because, like, uh, it's terrible seeing him get knocked out so often because, like, uh, he's, he's he had a good, pro like, uh, uh, career in terms of, like, his, uh, his build-up. He was, like, an Olympian. And, like, yeah, it's just, like, I think uh, Eddie is just, like, throwing him to the fire too early. He does it all the time. He needs to, like, you know, give him, like, like a, a yeah, just like a... Uh, yeah, give him a build-up fight because, like, he's getting knocked out so often. I feel like he's going to, you know, either retire or just hang around for a couple of more years. I, I don't see any, uh, you know, I don't see the, a chance for him to get a belt because I feel like he's he's too chinny now. He's, he's also, his chin is gone. Uh -huh. Well, you mentioned the build-up fight, but was this not supposed to be the build-up fight? I don't think they're expecting Jordan Gill, not really a renowned puncher, to come in and knock him out, possibly. Yeah, but I think I think I think if you just throw him underneath on the undercard with like uh, uh, just like the same way, uh, um, what you call it? Yeah, I feel like I don't, I don't think he should headline. I should I think they should put him as a co-main and have him fight. You know, like uh, um, uh, yeah, just like just like just give him like like cans, a nice five six cans. Just to get his confidence back up, because like I feel like I imagine his confidence is rock bottom at the moment. I don't feel like I feel like he feels. I think he's just going into fights just to stay relevant. I feel like he needs to, like, uh, yeah, just have a soft touch, a real soft touch, just to so get his confidence think, up. So I'm you sorry. think the, you you think the headliner role is as much of a cause of his problems as anything else? Maybe kind of a a pressure aspect. Yeah, because like also called because like. Putting anyone, putting him in there with someone with a heartbeat, I think it's like it's too risky. Cause like, honestly, cause like, um, cause like, oh, also he changes his style. He's coming forward now. He, he's not being a, he's he's not being a tactical fighter. He's also called a, yeah, he's not he's not using the sweet signs. I feel like he's going in, and like he, I feel like he's still thinking he's in his prime. I I feel like he's in the later stages of his career. I feel like they need to be cautious with him. Um, I mean like. Yeah, I feel like also called the headlining thing. You have when you, whenever he's headlining, they have to put him in with decent opposition. I feel like he he can't be. I feel like I know he's late in his age now, but like, but yeah, I feel like yeah, I think I feel like he'd be a good co-main guy for a bit, just for a short while, beat up some cans, get his confidence back up, and then yeah, and then get get him another coach because like all the coaches he's been getting recently are be encouraging him to go front. I feel like he's old style where he used to just stand behind a jab and just the Olympic style where you just, you know, flapping his what's it called uh, the jab and not engaging. I think that would have been best, like best for suited for him. This whole going in there, I, like I don't know who taught him this Mexican style, but it's like he doesn't have the chin for it. Well, I think the whole idea was he, he said before the fight he was going to Pedro Diaz to sort of get back to that Olympic move style. But when he got knocked down in the second round, that kind of went out the window and he, he stood and traded, which he did against Lopez. And as you said, he doesn't have the chin or, or the power for that, unfortunately. I think it was he got dragged into that fight, maybe. I mean, what kind of coach would you, uh, Ahmed, would you send him to now? Because that's going to be another change of trainer. He's already had two or three different trainers. I'm trying to... Also called uh, who's a good trainer in the UK at the moment? Um, I'm trying to, I'm going blank at the moment. Um, go to Adam Booth. <laughs> well, he's already been to Adam Booth. You can't go back yeah, to Adam Booth. Go back there, Never go back. Oh, I, I, have, I have a good one. Who's the current trainer for Anthony Joshua? I think he's the guy who used to train Tyson Fury. Oh, uh, Ben Davison. Ben Davison. Like, yeah, he's a good trainer. Yeah. Like also called high IQ yeah. there. I, and he'll get him out of the so called, if the tie gets too far, he will he'll throw in the uh, the towel so he doesn't get knocked out. So I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't I actually think Davison he's not a great fit for a lot of fighters. I don't if 
if Conlon wants to go on, I don't think Davison's a bad fit for him. Yeah, if, maybe he can train him and Lee Wood for the rematch together. He's training both of them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's what we need is a rematch of that. But I, I kind of, if there's only a, if, if Conlon wants to continue, it's only going to work if he admits that he's not a 130 pound puncher and he admits that he's a lazy super bantamweight who refuses to go down to the weight. He keeps trying to blame it on, on cutting weight when it has nothing to do with that. He's too small for the weight. And I swear he can still make 122. I'm thinking Donaire at 126 ended up back at 118. I, I just feel like he's got to quit with this. I'm a puncher who is weight cut mentality and fucking cut the weight and live the life and, and go back to where you belong, which is 122 pounds. Mm. Mm. Uh, do you have anything else you want to throw in, Ahmed? How do you pronounce uh, your name? Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that's yeah. Okay. Um, I think also called this is like also called but like I think the last bit I just want to say it's not relevant to like uh, yesterday's fights, but um, I think what do you like? I, I just want to say going on Anthony Joshua. I feel like if you thought you guys think I, I, I watched the last podcast, and I feel like. He will go back to like I, I wanted to go back to the like uh, uh, uh the Wallen fight. I think it's going to be really tough for him because like Wallen, when you know like he put up a good fight with uh, Tyson, and I feel like that is a much more difficult fight than what Wilder has. Wilder, I feel like he's fighting a I think a ch- like uh, a past his prime. Um, guy's name I've gone blank, but. But yeah, I feel like also called um, if if uh, if if Anthony Joffrey can go past Wallen, I feel like he could beat uh, Tyson Fury because like this Tyson Fury, like I think like, like you guys mentioned, he doesn't have the, the legs anymore. He's soft in the middle section. I feel I feel like that is a way more competitive fight if he can if he can get past Wallen. But yeah, um, do you think he will get past Wallen? I feel like I feel like it should because like he beat him twice before in amateurs. Like if if he if he can pass that mental and he's been in the uh, also called he's been in the dark hole for like what four days. He's he might have just got his you know like uh his rehab sorted out and he might have found a bit of confidence. I mean like he's talking the talk in the press conference. He was giving people attitude. He was giving big baby attitude. I, I like to believe that he's going back to like you know he like he's like uh. You know, back to the streets. Back, yeah, I would love to see a roadman like a Femi back. I would love to see that. But, but, but if he goes like also good. The thing is, the big test is once he gets in the ring, does he go back to being like you know like the tentative you know scared guy he was? I actually to be honest, that Usyk fight, the second Usyk fight, he made a lot of adjustments. I wish he stayed with uh, that coach because he was like. He did, I think he made a lot of improvements in that second uh Usyk fight because like he was able to like um he, he he was going on the front foot he was putting pressure on uh Usyk he I think he gassed out in the ninth but like he put like what's it called he had a uh, a decent game plan and I mm-hmm. feel like if if he, if that if, if that Usyk uh, uh Joshua from Usyk two comes back with some adjustments and he's more aggressive in the beginning I feel like. He could be like uh, uh, Wallen easier because he has he has the physical attributes. It's all the mental stuff that needs to be sorted out. Yep, that's a fair point. Well, after the day of reckoning, Ahmed, we are going to do a post fight pod. So feel free to jump on then if you want to. We'll do. Thanks, guys. Nice one. Cheers. Bye. There you go. Ahmed's coming on. Give Cheers, Ahmed. And opinions. Yeah, good stuff there. Well, we, I say we'll do a post fight pod if we get. Over a hundred likes on the videos. We'll do a post fight pod. You know, oh. can't give them too much, Matty. Can't give them too much. Yeah, you're just looking for an excuse not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know me too well. Uh, uh, one one thing Ahmed was talking about there was Conlon. He, he should have got on the back foot, which I think was the plan. But he got drawn in. He tried to slug it out. The fans could tell that he was kind of last chance saloon. He got dragged into a fight by Gill, who really got his game plan. Quite good, you know. He got the hands up, 
He got stuck in. He got he hurt Conlon early. It just felt like it was a matter of time before he caught him again with that same shot. It was the left hand over and over again. So we've got to give Jordan Gill, as much as we're sort of writing the obituary for Conlon here, give Jordan Gill a bit of credit as well. He, went, he said afterwards, Matty, I don't know if you listened to the, the Zone broadcast, he poured his heart out. He said he was at rock bottom after losing to Kiko. His missus left him. He was in a real dark place. He was telling us... He said some bad news. stuff happened to him as well. <laughs> <laughs> He was in the dark place like Anthony Joshua. <laughs> I know, fair play to him. I was saying that in the chat, like you can't take anything yeah. away from him, especially after everything he's been through. He fucking went though. and upset the other can't. He's got right there at the right time. Eddie, yeah. get him a world title fight now, mate. Make, give him that life-changing money like you like to talk about. And you make sure you get that boy set up and she ain't got no money, baby. <laughs> <laughs> she's like Ricky Bobby's wife for Talladega nice to come back when he has all the bread again like that's terrible I should, maybe I, I should, we should fucking talk about someone's wife that's <laughs> fucked up man fuck sake hit do the like button do you, guys, do you guys do you guys ever see the episode of Married with Children where Sam Kinison was Al's guardian angel Sam Kinison Sam Kinison the comedian oh, sorry. No. no no yeah it was it was pretty classic he went he was telling Al how he uh, how he died he said uh he, you know, he got married to his wife and everything was going good, even though she gained about 100 pounds for every year that he was married. But he didn't let that stop their love until one day he came home and he found his grandfather's pants in his bed. So what did he do? He went, he canceled his life insurance policy and he hung himself. <laughs> and that's how Sam Kinison died. His, he became Al's guardian angel. We're going to have to tick the sensitive issues box now, Matty. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Peggy and Kelly Bundy. Both of them, <laughs> oh, preach, brother, preach. <clears throat> anyway, back to Conlon. I can't remember what I asked you, Matty, but dig us out of this hole for goodness sake. Oh, well, you're talking. Well, yeah, fair play to Jordan Gill for, for getting over that rough patch in his life and uh, not canceling his life insurance policy and hanging himself out of spite for his, his wife. He, uh, he dragged himself out of the hard times. And uh, he came in and decided that he was going to play the role of a puncher. And uh, he's got a second lease on life for his career following that uh, loss to Lee Wood. So good on the guy. I, uh, I It was an unexpected performance. And uh, I think uh, he seems like the kind of cat who's going to make the most of it. Mm -hmm. He certainly does. Uh, Andy F2 says, is Gil a Caldwell fighter uh, heating up the radiators? The heat was on. He did give a shout out to Dave Caldwell. Uh, but he, he wasn't there in his corner. His dad was in the corner for the biggest night of, of his life so far. And he, he was a, a tough loss to Kiko. He did get absolutely battered in that fight. Yeah. And to come back and, like I say, he was fighting like an absolute puncher. Who knows where that punch power came from, Andrew? Well, it just shows you, mate, you know, a lot of guys through the years, great talents and that, but what, what, what's the weak point? The woman. You know, sometimes we call them the ball and chain because of the anchors to the, you know, to the ground. He basically had the shackles taken off him, mate, and literally went out there and just like put it all together, isn't he? He's, I don't know if he saved his career, so to speak, but he certainly like, put himself in the shop window. To be fair, I mean, last week, I think I even said it, it was, I didn't really expect him to win. I thought it was a safe option for Mick to come back to, and uh, it just. It just shows you as well. The other thing I was thinking about was was Conlon. You know, he's like he's remember the early half of his career. He was very, very boring to watch. Very, you know, you know, go textbook boxing. And it's just been the last few years now. He seems to be in these absolute wars and the, you know these these moments that you seem to remember. But it's for the, it's for the wrong reasons. That's three knockouts now, bad ones or bad beatings at least. Um, and we could see it as well with with that first knockdown yesterday. Sorry, in round two. You could just see that the way he went, it was, it was you just kind of felt it was just a matter of time and Gil just kind of kept putting the pressure on, kept put, just wouldn't be denied. You see what you um, mentioned there, Andy, by the way? I mentioned this to Dominic yesterday when, when we were coming back from, from the fights. Do you think now you sort of look at back at Mick's career and look at the likes of the, how close the Baluta fight was, look at the struggles in the Takush fight with the low blows and not being able to get him out of there and, and look at these as sort of warning signs almost? Yeah, and obviously as well, it was was the way earlier half in his career. Mate. I mean, he, he was really meant to be a one twenty two fighter. He just couldn't make the weight. He's too big for it as well. You had the long amateur career. God knows how many you know how many travels he's went and fought in many tournaments abroad. The countless hours of sparring. It's just caught up with him now. And says that's three bad knockouts. So. If anybody was was nearby him and that, and you know, you know, if you, you know a few Irish boys, I mean, I'd hope they'd be telling him you know, it's time to retire because uh, you know he's up in weight now as well. I mean, that's up, it's up at super feather. And hmm. Do you think he, he will really retire? Be up there. I'm not sure. Yeah. 100% sure he will. You know, 
Well, mate, what's, what's he got? I mean, okay, I can understand. They didn't want to go out uh, on that knockout back in May. I want to come back. It looked like a safe option. Gil, no, it wasn't really a noted puncher. As you say, he got destroyed off Kiko. You're like, you know, this, this is opportunity, really. I think even Eddie, I mean, Ed, Eddie's, I think Eddie's been honest in that as well, to be fair, in that saying, it's, it's a hardwood back. That's Eddie speak for saying, listen, I think it's time to, time to chuck it. Um, I think McGowfrey win maybe, maybe just um, dressed it up a wee bit. You know, obviously, the, kind of, you know, the Miguel Mariaga fight in that as well. 10 round decision. But Mariaga had seen better days. He had him done, was it twice, I think? Well, he dropped Mariaga three times. I, I was I was at that fight, and he's, right. two two of them were he said were slips. He said that himself. But Mariaga is another one who has to set his feet, doesn't he? And Conlon just yeah. kept moving, moving, moving. Yeah, and go for I think I don't know if Gofer had been on a, a decent run of form at that point, and they got iced in one round. Iced like, in one round, that's uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously the the Lopez situation. Well, we'll see what kind of puncher he is, and that. But it's to me, he's, he's up too high in weight at this point. I think one twenty six was a bit of a push. And he clearly kind of made 122. He's, he's just clearly, you know, it's a bit too big for the weight. But is he five seven five eight? Massive for a uh, for super bantamweight. And I just, he just couldn't make it anymore. But I say that everything new, coupled with the with, uh, with the knockouts, all the sparring, all the amateur stuff, and that as well. Thirty two year old, three bad knockouts in his career, and that it's, it's, it's time to go. I think. I think Andy as well. Just before we, uh, we bring Dominic in there, um, what Ahmed was saying was a good point. And ideally, you would want Conlon to come back in an eight round, a nice little soft one, sort of not obviously off TV, but a chief support, um, a, you know, kind of co support, whatever. But that's never going to happen in the real world. You know, it's Conlon no. boxing. They're looking for a headliner. He's a big star in Belfast. They need to pack out the Odyssey. He's still a name. The amount of people won't be coming out for him, but he has to lead those shows. You can't know. The gene is out of the bottle. He's, he's never going to go back to eight round co support yeah, unless they well, took him over to England. Maybe Ahmed had a good point, but they, they can't do that. Well, what you could do, mate, again, this is like parking the ego in that, really, as well. I mean, you could have Mick headline, but an eight round event where it's got actual prospects on the card, but Mick headline, let's say, at the mm. Europa, for example, Misfits or the boxing Ultra. man, he could fight me. Yeah, though, that as well. You, has, you could have that option. You might have a chance of knocking him out, mate. <laughs> You're back in the gym these days, I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like your man, Marcelli. <laughs> Dominic's in the corner. It must have been good anyway, Steve, when you are fucking going home there with Dominic in the car because break up the journey, like Dominic asks a question and then just before you drop him home, you can answer it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Brutal mente, <laughs> <laughs> Here, Rob, has Rob had his talent say on, on, on the fight yet? Yes, yes, I have, yes. The, I have, Dominic, yeah. Because oh, I was going to say, I was going to say, if I don't want Rob waiting for me to flip and give me a half <laughs> here in the next 45 minutes. Oh, you're all right, you're clear, you're clear, you're clear to go. <laughs> go on, Dominic, good, good to hear from you. What did you make of last night? Oh, yeah, it was just uh, sad, you know, it's uh, for, for Mick, like I'm... A few of the boys were saying in the others chat about him, about his sort of approach to the whole support and his, his decision to sort of not disguise his sort of allegiance and that's how he sort of maybe alienated some fans. But um, I, I wouldn't say I, I wouldn't say I dislike him ah, you know, fuck over, them. overtly, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's it's more. I I felt he. Should, I was saying to Rob earlier. I felt he should have packed it in after the the Lopez fight. Um, you know that was a. He was he was knocked out very bad there, and I was just as I said the last night, Steve. I was just thinking back to what Rob said on the pod last Sunday when he was saying if there only had been thirty or forty seconds left when he knocked Wood down in that first round, um, and it wasn't beyond the realms of possibility at all that he could have got Wood out of there in that first round, or as you said yourself, um, if he somehow had have held on in that last round, um, you know. The, the hinge of fate that uh, things could have been very different Slide for him. indoors. He's WBA champion. He's got the confidence. He's knocked down wood. He's beaten him for a title. He goes in against Mauricio Lara. All of a sudden, his tail's up. He feels he can outbox him for 12 rounds. Everything's different. So yeah. what you're saying is that uh, that uh, knockout loss to Lee Wood saved his life from having to go in against Mauricio <laughs> Lara? Quite possibly. <laughs> Quite possibly. Yeah, it's... Uh, and, and then, you know, the, I was thinking, you know, if you want to be crude about it, you know... The, the sort of oversimplified story is that you know it's the the old story about the difference between the amateur code and the pro setup, but I think that's probably a bit too harsh because if you look at the at the wood fight, you know we did come very close that night, um, but um, 
yeah, so Zandi said three bad knockouts, and I think that the the wood knockout it was it was it punctuated a, a an absolutely brutal preceding eleven rounds. That was a that was a very very tough fight. Um, the sort of fight that even if he had held on and not been knocked out in that last round, it takes it takes years off your career. Um, but the other thing I, I put into the chat earlier, and it, it sort of didn't occur to me when we were driving home, Steve, but um. You know, usually his his mother and father are you know their visible presence at ringside, yes, and I yes. couldn't see them no. last night. Good and point. to me, that sort of made me wonder. I'm just speculating, but you know, it it, it makes you think whether they were they fully on board with this decision to continue after the Lopez defeat, um, and back in May. But um, I mean, I I as I said, on the way down, you know, the fight was last night was 130 pounds, um. And it seemed to be the case that if he had to come through last night, the, there was talk of matching him against Cordina or a uh, rematch against Wood up at 130. But, I mean, as I was saying to the other guys earlier, the, the Lopez fight, which he, he got knocked out in, in May, was at featherweight, 126. How, how would he, you know, how would he cope with the, those guys up at 130? Um, fundamentally, he doesn't have the... I don't think he punches hard enough and he stays hit. Um I don't think I don't think it's that he that he can't take a punch. It's just that he he doesn't recover well enough. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's it's all it's all up to him what he wants to continue to do. I can't see him as you were just saying before you asked me to speak there. It's hard to see him rebuilding on the undercards in England, and uh, you know it's just hard to see that. Like so, it's yeah, it's. Uh, I, I, I thought he should have retired after the after the Lopez fight. You know, it's it's not good for you getting knocked. That's 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 too many knockouts, look. Like. Uh yeah, I think it's three and five. Uh, stick with us, Dominic. We're going to the undercard shortly. Rob, did you see anything in the undercard? We had Sean McComb. He outboxed Maxwell, dropped him three times. A Jarko, I think he's got a nice jab, boxed pretty well. Maybe lacks that killer instinct, doesn't like to get hit. Who does? And Tyrone McKenna against Lewis Crocker. I thought that if McKenna could get past the first four or five rounds, he might get into a rhythm and cause Crocker some problems. The only problems he caused him was his uh, fist smashing off his, his chin. Hands, like. Yeah, I'd like to see McKenna retire as well. I don't think, like, I know he's hard and everything. He could take a shot and he's in wars, but what's the fuck about yeah, him? Did, yeah, yeah, he has a podcast uh, now and he's selling it out and he's doing something different. I don't think there's anything need to see him out again. That was kind of the last roll of the dice for him. Yeah. Um, can't punch. That's really his problem, isn't it? Like if he could punch, he, he, he might have done some something more in the sport. But Lewis Crocker looks okay. We'll have to see how he develops. Like I wasn't, I wasn't fucking jumping out of my seat over that or anything. Like to be honest with you, uh, Dominic. What about you on the on the undercard? You're obviously there watching it all. Eight fights in total. I thought the pace of the undercard was was good. I I like it to move nice and swiftly, and it, and it did. Yeah, it did. Uh, that was that was good, and uh, you know you don't want to be hanging. Of course, you contrast it to the last fight in Belfast. You know the undercard. What happened? Unfortunately, that South African guy that was fighting Nick Ball. You know that that sort of made the the main event delayed by, if you remember. You know they had to wait for the ambulance and everything to come in, and it it slowed things down. And um, but yeah, la- last night you know it was it was good, good, good sort of pace this the thing and. Um, yeah, it was a good. Crocker was. It was sort of. I I thought McKenna. He looked to me like he was happy to to see the final bell and survive. Um, as, as you said to me, you know, if, if it looked like he he sort of was thinking if he opened up and tried to do anything offensively himself, he would probably get caught, um, and 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 put himself in danger being stopped. So, yeah, too sort of too tough for his own good. And um, Agiarco was an interesting one. Um. I, I'm not convinced by him. I'm not saying he was bad last night. I'm just what I'm talking about is the, the way. I'm not saying hype. Hype's maybe the wrong word, but there's sort of been a feeling that he's being sort of groomed for bigger things, maybe very big things. And I don't see that sort of. I don't. I I, I don't see that in his performances so far. Um, he's definitely a very Teddy boxer. You know, he's the job was very good. Um, but. I, I was sort of worried for him if that fight had been twelve rounds um, against an opponent who knew how to cut the ring off, um, and who knew how not to smother his own work. Uh, Williamson was just a bit too crude uh, to really ask those those questions. And 
Eddie sort of said it in his post fight interview or one of the eight, one of the YouTube channels. He sort of said, um, going forward, they the people who are making the decisions for him, um, as manager, whoever it is, um, they need to be on board with the sort of fights that Eddie and Matrim want to put on the table for him because it looked like Eddie basically didn't hide the fact that it took a bit of bit of a struggle to to get this fight made. Yeah, forced um, his hand almost. Yeah, to, to get this fight on. So, um, and again, you know, it, it it looks to me that he's. I always you always look at this level. What what's the punching power like? We all are are the are they able to get rid of guys at, at a certain level? And he started off his career at middleweight. He's now down at light middleweight, um, and he still doesn't look to be really bothering guys at this level with his power. Um. So I mean, you look at who else is at that at that sort of weight in the in the British scene. Josh Kelly, who's probably maybe a bit ahead of him. Um, I wouldn't really fancy his chances against Josh. Not that I'm a big fan of Josh Kelly, but um, I wouldn't really fancy his chances. So I mean, for me, the jury's out. He was he was decent, but you know, you're 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 sort of measuring it against the sort of as I say, not the hype, but the sort of way he's been marketed and built. That comment on the screen there, Dominic, is interesting from Thomas Newman. He says, Warren let him go without much of a fight. I didn't get the overriding feeling that Hearn will offer to re-sign him. Yeah, it's, couldn't, couldn't disagree with that there. It's, um, again, if you're, if you're, maybe it's not him that was dragging his feet to fight Williamson. Maybe it was whoever's managing him, whatever remnant of the lovely bunch of lads that's, that's sort mm. of o- overseeing his choices. But um, yeah, one, one to keep an eye on. But it, it's sort of hard, as, as we were saying on the way home, you know, guys like Crocker isn't really big enough yet to headline on his own. He's got a good good enough following that I could hear it around me where I was sitting in the arena, but um yeah, he, he's probably gonna have to go and fight um on Eddie's undercard somewhere, which may not be a bad thing. Um, yeah, you'd you'd think if they could tie someone up with Podrick McCrory, then they could have a bit of a double act, but I don't think Crocker and McCrory are maybe the double yeah. act. And then McCrory Cro- McCrory is fighting Ber- is fighting Berlanga. That's right. Oh, it uh, is right. Yes, yes. Well, I was just about to say what Marty said. I mean, Eddie sort of—it's basically they haven't confirmed the venue. It, it, it looks like it's early in the January, or um, Eddie's just sort of they haven't got the venue. I think tied down, but he—he he was it's basically there was a there was a report about it yesterday. I think that's the fight that's going to happen. There you go, uh, Dominic. Stick with us as long as you are able to or wish. Uh, Andy, anything from the uh, Conlon undercard? If not, then you can take us over to uh, Felix Sturm if you want, whichever uh, takes your fancy. Uh, no, I've never seen any undercard, mate. I've never seen Felix Sturm either. Just, I've just seen some comments that he'd won like, ninth stoppage. round stoppage. He's back. Round. I was going to say eighth round, but is he forty-four now? Um, exercise the ghost, I suppose, for the first fight. So I can really, can really say about it, but. I don't know why he'll do it, to be fair, mate. Um, probably just cherry pick. You know, he's he's his own man, his own promoter. Does it pretty well, but... Yeah, I've seen a copy of the fight and that as well, available. I wasn't downloading it. No worth, uh, no worth my, my time at this point in his career, mate. Uh, what about a quick word on Nathan Gorman? Um, Andy, I mean, flip me, man. <laughs> was I tell you what, man, that was, that was embarrassing. I mean, to, to have such... I wouldn't call it high profile, but... As a uh, as a chance is seen by 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 many eyes, and I mean it's terrestrial TV at the end of the day, and they have a guy. What uh, weight was it? Was it like two eighty or something? Like that. The guy was massive. Two ninety six. Two ninety six. And the other guy was two seventeen. <laughs> I don't know what Aussie is, man. Aussie oh, needs, same, needs to be man, that's one. eighty ninety pound difference, that isn't it? It's incredible. I mean, I know they say though he was talented and all that, but this is this is his heart's not in it, and there he is getting rocked up there like that. It was so bad. Very early. I, mean, I didn't watch it all, but his his trunks were so bad that were fonding over his ass. Just about oh, that. The tr- they got then, out a big fucking thing of industrial they, tape to try and keep him up. Like, they fuck had to me. get his the tape for his wrists or for his for his hand wraps and get that run and beat his gut to hold hold it in place. So it was an absolute disgrace, as Ozzy would say, mate. An absolute disgrace. And they, they have the Surlands as well. I mean, I, I really don't know what they're playing at with this Channel 5 deal. I mean, they've got a, a great wee gig there, man. They put on some decent 50-50 fights at, at a decent level. We're not talking world level, obviously, and that, but that is a, a great platform to have some some good area-level fights, maybe even British title here and that, but then you're filling it with fucking this, this trash. People who have had their chance, they're no in it, and then you get to the fucking... 
the German Delboy and Rodney Trotters of the fucking boxing world, by the way, and let them fucking destroy it. Get Mick Hennessy back in there ASAP, man, before the fucking sink, uh, before the ship does go down and fucking, it's, it's unsavable because we need all the platforms we can get with boxing at the minute, and that's especially on free TV, and this is a shite we're getting served up. Absolutely deplorable. I went to my bed after, it was an absolute disgrace. Could you imagine Gorman and Hennessy in the ring together celebrating afterwards, Andy? That'd be a sight to behold. Aye, mate, you need to get that reinforced, okay. <laughs> Titanium girders a lot. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Good luck to Nathan Gorman. He's doing well. Gorman the doorman, back in Weather Spoons very shortly, hopefully. Uh, Matty, you're not going to burden you, literally. Still the probably <laughs> flat and fellas down at Weather Spoons, though, wouldn't he? Like fucking Julius <laughs> Francis. You know what I mean? Obviously, <laughs> Julius Francis getting fucking upended by Tyson, man. He was fucking all over the shop. Then fucking somebody mouthed at him and he got splattered. So, yeah, don't go up to, don't go up to Gorman when he's back on the door and be like, uh, you want to lend this mask and tape or whatever? He just fucking smash it like one thing so. <laughs> Getting iced on the door by Gorman. Uh, Matty, stateside action before we move on to the stuff next week. Uh, show there's no show box has become no box, but thankfully on a Wednesday we've still got pro box. What what went down this week? Well, yeah, we had some good pro box action uh, this uh, this week. Um, let's see here what we what do we have on this one? We had a a, a draw between uh, Yanis Argilagos and Jose Lopez. Uh, that one uh, I thought was a pretty fair draw, maybe leaning towards uh, Lopez. Uh, we had a uh, battle of undefeateds go the distance. Marquez Valle taking out Fareed Ngoga. Uh, that one eh, that was an all right fight. Uh, then you had uh, Mausolino Nicholas Lopez losing a 10-round decision to undefeated Tarek Zayna. Uh, Zayna, an interesting guy, Steve. He's originally from Morocco, spent time at Gibraltar, went to school in England when he turned 18 and now he is boxing out of Tijuana, Mexico <laughs> speaks four languages. Oh. Um, interesting cat. Yeah. Very interesting cat. Um, so uh, we'll see how that, uh, his career pro progresses. He's uh, kind of more of a boxing type, but uh, you know, to box with that style in the gyms of Tijuana, um, you got to learn how these guys are going to walk you down. So I wouldn't doubt that he's, uh, he's uh, capable of what he's trying to do there. Um, uh, the, this card was headlined by Orlando Gonzalez taking a split decision over Jorge Castaneda. Uh, Castaneda dropped hard in the fourth. I was shocked that this uh, fight ended up going the distance. But Castaneda just slowly started working his way into the fight and um, finally uh, managed to hurt Gonzalez a couple of times. And uh, I don't necessarily know that uh, the split decision was right. I thought that Gonzalez probably got five rounds in there at least with what the knockdown should have given him a clean win. But it was a close fight down the stretch where Castaneda was definitely pouring it on. Um, so, yeah, another winning card from Pro Box. Uh, on a Wednesday, they'll have their... Uh, Last one of the year, a uh, a week from this Wednesday. So uh, looking forward to that one. Looking forward to a bit of pro box, uh, pro box even. I'm hopefully going to try and actually start watching them at some point. Matty does recommend them every week. Shout out to them. They're enjoying themselves. Right, quick uh, roundup of all the rest of the action over the weekend. Um, Don King got a card. Mike Perez was supposed to be on it. As far as I know, he didn't turn up. Trey Sean Wiggins, Ian Green, uh, Vaughan Alexander. Yeah, I think it's time to move on. Uh, Kevin Lely, Sajo, was in action on DAZN, apparently, over in France. Don't know who Some of them were just AI-generated names. <laughs> they? Like, not Don Kings. Like Sports it's, Illustrated. There's no fuck away that they're real fighters like Trey that, Sean Wiggins. Fuck off, man. That card was the one that uh, Broner was supposed to be on, too. That's so right. God knows. Maybe that could be any card. Acrimony. <laughs> That could be any card. Oh, that was a card Broner was supposed to be on over the last five years. Fuck me. Uh, the Broner Don King link up is working well as far as we know. Uh, shout out to Sajo <laughs> going in France. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ryan Rosicki uh, with a one round knockout over Dora Dola. He's absolutely washed, man. They need to um, they need to look after him, I think. And then, Matty, I don't know if you watched this on fr a Friday evening. I did mention it to you. The zone. Uh, one of the prospects, he's got the Wellings curse already, but he's doing, he's, he's, he's going against the Wellings curse so far. 8-0, 20 years of age. This is his seventh knockout, this time in the third round against Adrian Gutierrez. I'm talk talking about PBC favourite Jalil Major Hackett. He's my one to watch for the future. So that's going to put the cooler on him, unfortunately. Did you get to watch it, Matt? I did not see that one this week, unfortunately. That's okay. It was a third round knockout for Mr. Jaleel. He did his best. We wish him well going forward. Uh, let's have a look in the chat, see who's knocking about. Then we'll get to Dominic's thoughts on Ryan Garcia. Uh, we've got number one, 
uh, is there. No, no sign of number two yet. But we've got Paul Raftery. That'll have to do. Uh, Jokers Wilds in. He says, yo, yo, yo to you. Uh, that Ryan Garcia Duarte fight was fake. They were throwing punches to make it look real, but it was actually light taps. 100% fraudulent. So there you are. There's a bit of information for you. Johnny's here. The Yo, Roger was eight and a half rounds. But like, whatever about like fucking corruption, about, you don't think fellas are going to the ring to choreograph fucking fake fights? Yeah, fuck off, man. Like, fake fights, fake news. Uh, what else have we got here? Um, Yimmy Yappy. Ryan when Rob, it, when well. Rob thinks your conspiracy is gone <laughs> yeah, too far, yeah. man. It's yeah, Joker's wild. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of it like that. Now that you say it like that, you could be onto something. Uh, MB, Andrew Thicket, uh, Ben Russell's here, F2. David Palmer, shout out to David. He always throws in super chats. Good lad. Uh, Danny Young's with us as well, uh, head of the merchandise department. The Juice, uh, Thomas Newman, AP, Will You Stand 86. Uh, Hat and Bombs here as well. Ahmed was on earlier. Duke Dave. Uh, who else we got? Chris Butler. Harvey Price returns. We'll do one more, shall we? Let's see who else is at the bottom here. As we scroll down, uh, take Ames. Wellington, they are take Ames. He was there last night enjoying himself in Belfast. Hopefully you got home safe and well, uh, Mr. Ames. We'll forget about Ryan Garcia. Dominic's not interested in him. And, and I don't blame him as well. He got the job done in uh, round eight. Big up the WhatsApp groups, as Michael Thompson. Patreon.com forward slash Boxing Asylum if you want to join that. Uh, what have we got for next week? Let's have a look here. I mentioned this one to you off air, Andy. We mentioned it a few weeks ago, actually. You don't have to make any comment if you don't want to. But this Friday evening, they're not paying for us to go out there, unfortunately. The Lions Centre, Cayman Islands, Matt Windle <laughs> against Craig Derbyshire for the Commonwealth Boxing Council light flyweight title. Windle 7-5-1. and one. Derbyshire's 8-29-4. and four. There's hope for us yet, Matty, uh, Andy, sorry, if they're fighting out in the Cayman Islands. Light flyweight title as well, mate. Can you make light flyweight? Fuck no, no chance. Just, just get a bout of glandular fever, mate, and drop about three stain your day. I'm gonna say, what's that like seven stone or something? Is it? Oh fucking Jesus, man! I don't know. <laughs> I it's, it's an odd one though. Eh? Matt, I've never had a Matt Window before. He's from Birmingham, seven five and one. I mean, how the how the fuck is your man here, Craig Derbyshire, managed to get himself ranked for a Commonwealth title fight? Is it, Oh, it's, in an English it's a different know. it's a different commonwealth this is like a, a different sanctioning body it is not the commonwealth title oh, yes. it, is. it is surely are you sure yeah, yeah. it would normally say it would wouldn't it normally no, it's in be, the, it's well, in the cayman it, islands it's the cayman world title <laughs> what, <laughs> what wouldn't it normally say bbb of c on no, there no. if that was the case oh you know no what? no no no, no. I, I think I'm right. I, th I think the Commonwealth, this is a different sanctioning body. I think this is Aye, a Cayman Island. Body. Yeah, it's part it's of Commonwealth. No, Andy's right. It is It is the proper one. It's to the fact that it's light flyweight. So it doesn't have much form, this Andy. So I Matt Windle won the title before against a Ghanaian in 2022. Before that, the last time it was fought for was in Ghana in 1987. And then before that, Andy, we go right back to 1902 in the New Adelphi Club where Johnny Hughes fought Tibby Watson, and it was then billed as the World and Imperial British Empire 108-pound title. So there yeah, you go. so it was this named back in the days. stupidest fucking title ever. This so, makes, like, IBUs and WBUs and CB, whatever acronym. This is retarded. Fuck no, but me. that was back in the days when you actually had, like, you had, like, all these different continents, but you had one fighter claiming he was world champion, so they had to go to these different continents and beat these guys to be classed as the man. Different days, different days, but no, it's, it is a Commonwealth title. You're right, Steve. Yeah, uh, Johnny's right. Derbyshire isn't bad. He was a journeyman for years, hence the lopsided record. I've seen him fight in Belfast. Shout out to Paul Raftery. He's only gone and thrown in 1999, 20 quid there. Uh, shout out to Paul for throwing in the, the super chat to us. We had a message there. So I, I think given that, Steve, yeah. we ought to just do the post-fight pod on the 23rd. I, I think 20, 20 pounds is at least worth 100 likes. Come on. Well, I was going to do it anyway. I'm just trying to get the 100 likes, Matty. They have let the cat out the bag now, haven't I? I'm weak. I'm weak, man. Yeah, well, I can hear that by the sound of your voice that you're weak. I know, yeah. Oh, I'm Stunned. dying here. <laughs> If the, if, if the lads of the house want to take over the household, they, today would be the day of the <laughs> thing. So what's this 1999 bought us now? So we have to do a post-fight pod on what day? 23rd? Day of Reckoning, Andy, 23rd no, of December. Week. Yeah, no, that best card ever. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I should do actually it. do a live. You know what you should do, actually? I'll tell you what. See if we can coin in 100. Fight companion. We'll do. No, For the whole card. Big Baby Miller, the war up. 
We'll Start, do a fight companion if we can get to what's along twenty uh, pounds. A house a hundred quid and we'll do the whole card for his for free. God, I'm gonna be so fucking tired of you guys. Well, it's not for free. Hours. We're charging is a hundred pound. <laughs> 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 Aye, okay. If so, what you said. So say that again, Andy. Then a hundred pounds tonight. A hundred quid tonight, and we'll do the entire heavyweight card on the twenty third for free. And oh. we're already at twenty five. We won't even consider what the denominations are. Whatever they call oh, it, a dollar to dollar. Oh, we'll go live at the first they, card on the day, a uh, day of reckoning. Sorry, the first fight, and then just yeah, we'll go live. We'll do fight companion through. style if we can get okay. to hundred pounds tonight. That's, okay, you do okay, realize that's going to be like a six hour card. There's like eight or nine. Yeah, well, we start at fucking Dubois, Big Baby Miller. We're not fucking watching Isaac Lowe and all that, like fighting the fucking Middle East or whatever. You, know you don't I mean? want to watch. We're not watching that Bevo. No, but, but we're not going to comment. See, this is the thing. It does come with terms and conditions. Or so obviously in that as well, right? So we're not going to be watching, we're not going to be commenting on Bivol against fucking London Arthur and falling asleep all that type of shit. Uh, and what do you call him? So that heavyweight shithead? Demore. Demore. Well, we're, not, yeah. we're more commentating on him and fucking uh, Hergovic. Yeah, let's just maybe do the two, we'll do the two main, for, you know, what do you think uh, we are here? Fuck's sake. Whores. Fights, what do you think okay. we are? Whores? Do we still have to do a post-fight pod? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. That's another condition. <laughs> Paul, after he'd be sorry, he threw that 20 quid in, but thanks anyway. I don't yeah, think we're yeah. going to have to do the pre fight party. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> Horse Cock Nelson's going to come in with 79, mate. <laughs> uh, Jimmy Appy says, Steve, I want back in the boxing nutters messenger group. It's been too long. I didn't even notice you were gone, Jimmy, to be honest with you. <laughs> Is he still paid on his Patreon? Uh, I don't know. Probably not. It's become, well, a, it's become a bit of a shit show, hasn't it? <laughs> always. Always. Fans need to wake up, says Joker's Wild. Audience needs to wake up at this rate. Let's move on. What are we on to? Uh, uh, yeah, Cayman Islands. We've done that one, haven't we? Uh, Dominic, Chris Billum Smith, next Sunday evening. So you will get a live next Sunday evening. We'll be <laughs> yeah, watching. There you go. <laughs> there you go. You don't have to pay anything. There's we'll be your chatting, fight companion. Chatting about the fights. Uh, Francesca Hennessy is on the card. Uh, Michael McKinson, they've both got TBAs. It sounds good, this. Uh, ben Whitaker's against Steven Leonetti Dredd Hadge. I bet he's good. Lee Cutler against Kingsley Eb- Egbenike. I remember him, seen him before. And Chris Billum Smith in the main event, Dominic, for the WBO World Cruiserweight title against the battle hardened pole, Matthias Masternak. What are you thinking about this one? On a great deal, Steve, to be quite honest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he said Billum Smith. Yeah, he's. Uh... I would rather see Billum Smith get this rematch with um, React Poor. Um... I think he's. I think he's. He's done enough to deserve that. I, I'm just. I'm just sort of relieved that we're not getting a, a repeat of that a Coley grabathon that we saw earlier this year. Um, things can't get much worse than that there. So um, yeah, he should. He should. Uh, he should take her master neck. Um, hopefully stop him. Um, and hopefully move on to either either a a, a rematch with Reactpor or um. Or even a, a, a fight with um, Abataya, um, which I think I was a said to you a few months ago, I remember, Steve. That would be a very good fight, which Abataya would probably win, but it would be very exciting for as long as it lasted. Um, yeah, so don't really have much to... Just the, the overall, I suppose the guys have talked about it in previous pods, the overall quality of the of the boxer and Sky product. Um, it's sort of gradually waning every, every sort of time you pay attention to it. Um, it's hard not to, it's hard not to notice that sort of gradual slip and quality control. Um, you know, there was when when they first got underway. I remember, you know, when they first started, you had the Khan Brook, and you had a few other big fights, and everyone thought, no, they're not going to go silently into the night. But I sort of, I was expecting quietly. I was sort of expecting this eventually to pass. That, uh, you know, the standard would. Would get to this sort of level, so um, yeah, it's uh, Billum Smith. He, he shouldn't have too much of a problem. You you wouldn't have thought. I mean, how long ago was it since Masternak fought Belly? Like you're talking five years at least, aren't you? Oh, easily, yeah, I'd say so. I can't even remember to be honest. With you. It would have been oh, 2015, eight years. Mm. Fuck, we're old. I know. Yeah, so it's tell me about fuck me. <laughs> I I have my thoughts on the the boxer and the own thing, and I look at. There was a an A and R famous A and R, um, Jewish New Yorker Leor Cohen, who worked for Def Jam Records, and and he used to have a phrase. He said that we sta- we sign stars, we don't dust up bums, and Eddie used to sign stars. 
but he used to dust up some bums as well. And I don't mean that in a derogatory way to the fighters, but Eddie was a great salesman. So he would have you believing that Joshua Boazzi and Lawrence O'Coley had a fucking second coming of Evander Holyfield. If you listen to him on Sky, and he'd be on Sky all day banging on about it on his platform. And these fellas have left Eddie and realized that probably the grass is not greener. Eddie was probably doing a good job for him and getting them fucking paydays or, or opportunities that were probably more than their commercial value um, allows them to get on another platform. And Ben Shalom's obviously waved a bag of money in front of these fellas with the sky budget. But I don't think Ben Shalom's as good as a salesman as Eddie is. Like, is he? Even Ed, and he doesn't fucking, he doesn't hype the fighters. He doesn't use the platform. He doesn't have these fellas fucking head to head on fucking, doesn't have them on soccer Saturday and all fucking. Eddie knew how to fucking maneuver fellas and make them uh, get them, gain public uh, traction for them. Like, he's, he's a great salesman. Like, whatever you think about him, he's a fucking, he's a bullshitter, but he's a salesman. He does his job for his fighters. Like, and I don't, I don't think Ben Shalom is as good as Eddie with that platform. Like, no, suck off Ben Shalom. Completely agree with that. Uh, M. Lithgow, 1983, agrees as well, we assume. 499. He says, dig deep, lads. And that spurred Johnny in for his customary 79p. So we're moving in the right direction, Andy. As is Boxer, supposedly. Um, Bell, and he said, Bell, you then. Masternak against Chris Billum Smith. I think it's going to be a war. I think they're going to go head on with each other and there's going to be a few brain cells knocked out by the end of next Sunday. Yeah, I think it'll be a decent fight, mate, to be fair. Um, Masternak generally is a, a good fighter. Now, I know he's got up in age a wee, but I don't know what age he actually is. Must be at least mid 30s and that. But from what I've seen him since the Kalinga fight and that, okay, it's no great opposition that he's been facing, but it's been opposition that he's he's won over. He's you know he's been active in terms of like his output. He's only been and, stopped once ever. Yeah, another thing as well is I, I think. Bellum Smith can get himself dragged into close quarter battles far too often. I think that's bread and water to a guy like Master Knight. His experience, the guys that he's been in with in the past and that as well, might stand him in good stead. Unless he's completely washed overnight, I think we might get a decent scrap out of this, to be fair. Um, if it goes a distance, it'll be interesting, but I would not be surprised if Master Knight has got one effort left in him that he might just pull it out the bag here, actually, to be fair. So it'll be interesting to see what the odds are. So any of you betters out there, Matty, um, definitely have a wee look at Master Mac and that because this is he is well was at least anyway. I've not seen him. I don't think he's fought this year, has he? But anyways, he's um, generally an, an active output fighter. So if he's able, to, if he's still like that, um, I think if he's got the ambition, it might have been a world title fight as well. Not getting many many more of these opportunities kicking around about the doors at his age and that. So it's a big chance for him. So. I would not be surprised to see Masternak pull it off here, so you better get a look at it. I would probably see maybe Masternak on decision, actually. I think he'll be too busy for, for Billam Smith. I think we'll see Billam Smith probably cover up in the pocket while Masternak's trying to pick off the shots. And then he rule out maybe a stoppage up against the ropes where the referee just steps in because he's taking too much punishment. Interesting, Matty. Thomas Newman as well says Masternak will beat Billum Smith. I think he can beat down CBS. I think it will be a head-on war and there's, there is possibly a chance. Masternak's a tough guy. Hasn't fought in over a year though, Matty. Last he went in against Jason Whiteley. I think he used to, wasn't he now feed his own pet? Anyway, he's in Australia and he got beaten by Masternak last October. So the inactivity could be the key because Billum Smith is active in and out of the ring. We are keeping our videos and pet alive on this pod, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Never. Why, I, man? Class show, man. <laughs> Master Next uh, paying three to one um, right now. So I, I, I guess it could be could be worth Get some money there. on it. But isn't Master Next pushing upwards towards 40 now? Near, Dude, near 40, yeah. Yeah, but let's be honest. Belma Smith's got a ceiling. I think he's at it now, uh, to be fair. I just, I just... That's a pretty high ceiling, though. Masternak's only 36. He's a spring chicken, Matthew. Spring chicken, spring chicken. You, I, you were Philly Sturm winning by knock out there last night. He's 44. He could yeah, be up at Cruiserweight next. Yeah, but, but yeah, he knocked out a 39-year-old, though. I, I don't know here. There's a lot of geezer stuff going on here. I just, I can't, uh, I could see I could see Masternak winning. I, I could absolutely see him winning, but I'm not, I think the odds are, are about right. I, I really do. I think William Smith is, he's, He's he's probably the he's he's either the second or third best cruiserweight in the world right now probably so I think he's got enough for Masternak. 
A final word to you, Rob. Yumi Yappi says, I think uh, CBS will get through it with the crowd behind him. That That is a big plus down in Bournemouth. He's, he's built a nice little following for himself. CBS is, uh, CBS is no great shakes, but surely he beats Masternak. I don't know. I think it's a 50-50, to be honest. Yeah, and he's kind of swaying me a little bit. like, um, But I think CBS is a tough yoke. Like, he's a big fucking tough unit. Like, And I think when a goal gets tough, he can dig deep. Um, Masternak, tri- tricky operator, come to fight. I just think he'll get through it. I think you're right. I think it'll be a bit of a firefight, but the crowd will pull him through and he'll win a uh, decision. Decision win, says uh, Rob. Uh, next weekend, Matty, we'll all be watching Haney against Pro Grey, but top rank will be busy at the same time with their Cuban sensation, Robesi Ramirez. He will be in action over in, I think it's Texas, actually. We went through this earlier, didn't we? Yeah, it is. I oh, know it's Florida, sorry, Florida. Well, same sort of area. Robesi Ramirez, 13-1, and one, WBO World Featherweight title, going in against Rafael Espinosa. Haven't done any uh, prep or previewing of this guy, Matty. He's 21-0 with 18 knockouts. He's El Divino, six foot one. My God, six foot one, a featherweight. Guadalajara, he's going <laughs> to... He's going to be there, there to be hit anyway. He's fucking it what? It says on the six foot one, a six foot one featherweight. <laughs> fucking Jesus Christ! Twenty one and zero with eighteen KOs. Let's see if we spot people, anyone. Of people Moto. are going to. People were outrageous, man. When fucking Helms came in and fucking well, all the way as a six foot, what six foot two? <laughs> That's right. Fucking no, six foot nobody. one featherweight. Yeah, he's fought nobody. Yeah, five fights ago, he fought a guy who was fourteen and twelve. So. You Half of them just actually... fucking jumped out of the ring beforehand. That's why he's <laughs> fought no one. Fuck's sake. Yeah, if I was to say maybe just just like without having seen him, taking a little something maybe from his box rec to say what this guy might be about. Um, he's only 12 as well. He turned pro at 11. <laughs> he, he, beat, he beat Carlos Ornelas, who has a fairly glossy record. And uh, in his four losses, he's been stopped three times. And uh, one of those losses, uh, stoppage losses was not to Espinosa. He went the distance with Espinosa. So that Ooh, power on his, yeah. that power, he might be feasting on some cans there. Good spot, uh, but, Yeah, he might be feasting on some cans there, but a, a lanky guy like that, you know, he could land the right uh, shot and leverage it against anyone possibly so. So um, there's not a lot of value on, on Ramirez, but you might be able to get a little bit on his opponent by knockout just as a punt um, because you never know what could happen there. Uh, Ramirez is a very good fighter, um, but I think that he might be one of those guys who gets a little cocky at times, and it might catch him at the wrong time. But I would venture to say he probably walks through this one. But as I went through that undercard, um, there's some interesting fights on that one. Um, uh, is A lot of undefeated guys against one-loss guys and stuff, so... Um, you might see some upsets and some good value on some fighters with some experience on there. So definitely keep your eyes out on that top rank card. It's not great shakes, but I think it's a little bit more well matched than uh, meets the eye. You'd have to think the body would be there, Matty, for Ramirez to hit. And I was thinking as well of taller fighters and the lower weights. And Celestino Caballero came to mind, the, the Panamanian. I've brought him up here. He was a super bantamweight and he was 5'11". So not far off the Espinosa realms there. But the, the body will be there for Ramirez, you'd imagine, with him being that bloody tall. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's just all a matter if he wants to fight in at that close of a distance, which I, I think he'd probably be willing to. And uh, But, yeah, he's uh, thinking back there, Jeffrey Matabula. Fought at 122 yeah, pounds. He was six foot tall. If he was an inch, Ali Funika fought Nate Campbell at 135 pounds. He was six foot tall or so. You look at Gary Cully. He's a fucking freak. Um, yeah. Uh, but they are, as we've seen with those lanky guys, uh, you can go over the top of them. And uh, that chin is pretty goddamn vulnerable. Uh, all of uh, uh, Sebastian Fandora uh, as well. But yeah, this, this undercard is not too bad. Um, yeah, uh, you got Michael Coffey on there against an undefeated heavyweight. Uh, Jahai Tucker's uh, trying to come back off his first uh, loss against an undefeated Francisco Daniel Verone. Uh, Delonte Johnson undefeated, taking on one loss, Jamer Espinosa. Rohan Polanco taking on one loss, Keith Hunter. And uh, Bruce Carrington uh, fighting Jason Sanchez. Kind of surprised he's not one of the guys getting a... Uh, a one loss fighter on his rec on his resume there. Cause I kind of think he's uh, got a little bit of a higher ceiling. Yeah. That guy uh, he's fighting went, uh, he fought Zelfa Barrett earlier this year. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, I see. 
I see so, their undercards, Andy. The top rank undercards are getting a lot more competitive lately. Are they? I'm not looking at the new mate. I'm just looking at some footage of this guy Esperosa just now. Actually, okay. He, uh, what are you seeing? He's tall. He can. He's got a habit of kind of leaning down to kind of you know weird guys. Suppose he has to. <laughs> he has to. Aye, but at the same time, he's he leaves that chin. He doesn't do, do much body head movement and that. And Ramirez is a southpaw, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Yeah. I think he'll catch him down the middle with some of these left hands, like to be fair. But um, yeah, he's. Uh, He's made to be knocked out from Ramirez, isn't he? And then we all want to see Ramirez move on and unify with Luis Alberto Lopez. Well, that's what I want to see anyway. Skinny legs as well, mate. He's not really good, good footwork. He's going to get knocked out in about three or four rounds, isn't he? Don't know, mate. It could be anything at the end of the day here. I mean, it may, it mm. may just raise to the occasion, but I just look at his record here now as well. He's you know, kind of fought his close to in Mexico. Yeah, I don't think he's left before, has he? Oh, one fight early in his career in America, but... Couple of, uh, couple of fights in America. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he's not really fought anybody. What's his ranking? Um, I'm not sure. In box, in box rec, he's 47th in the world. So, <laughs> and he's 7th, he's seventh top, in Mexico. <laughs> top 15th in whatever division Ramirez Yeah, he's is. been dragged in, hasn't he, Infant, mate? He ain't going to win. Yes, but he's ranked number 11, so he's well done the, the pecking or the WBO ranking. So he's clearly a monetary, a, a voluntary defence. So they've seen something in this guy, as you say. Yeah. Maybe they've... I've not watched much footage of him, actually. I mean, this is a length of time I've been speaking. You guys have been talking about this fight. I've been kind of, like, catching up with the guy. He's, he's no great, like... But he has got long... He's got long levers. He can drop in a few body shots and that. But the level of opposition he's fighting here and that, it's, it's no great. He's got good, decent combos. But I would think Ramirez and that would be too quick for him at the end of the day. You know, I, I'm okay with this fight as as long as Ramirez's next fight is against Lopez. And That's what I was going to say, yeah. That's what I want to say. Yeah. It, give me that fight and, and whatever this fight is, just let it be. But uh, that, that fight needs to happen. Both top rank. It, it's getting stupid. Who wins? Yeah. Who wins? I kind of think that... Um, that Lopez has just a little bit of that unorthodox, a little bit of a rough style that I think a guy with an Olympic pedigree is going to kind of have a hard time dealing with just because it's so weird. Um, so I, I kind of lean towards Lopez. I agree, Rob. I think that um, Rob Easy has been there to be hit in the past, and after the first three or four rounds, he wears down. I would fancy Lopez to catch him at some point, maybe not stop him, but I, I, I would pick Lopez in that fight. Yeah, I have to see it. I don't know, maybe... Uh, Ramirez can pick his pocket, but don't fucking ask me. Over the, after the last few weeks, uh, my calls on anything, don't fucking ask me. Like, I don't I've know. Got what the fuck do I know? I've got four words for these. Never trust a Cuban. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. Uh, okay, so Ramirez, Ramirez against Lopez. Hopefully, if he can get past uh, the spidery Espinosa. Uh, let's move on to the Chase Center, San Francisco in California. We were talking off air, uh, Andy. The Devin Haney against Regis Progre fight. Is this something that's getting you excited towards the end of the year? I tell you what, no. Matchroom, to be fair to them, they are having a pretty decent end of the year. They had Conlon uh, this weekend. They've got the Haney Progre fight next weekend. Then they've got Sonny Edwards against Bam Rodriguez. Then they've got the Day of Reckoning thing on the 23rd, which we're not going to be doing the uh, live uh, companion show for. But it's not a bad end to the year from old Eduardo, I think. Yeah, well, we'd give him credit, mate, but that's his job at the end of the day, as Roy Keane would say, to put on decent cards and that. So, mm -hmm. uh, cheers, Eddie. Um, as for the fight itself, I say to you as well, mate, um, I'm not really feeling it, to be fair, but I say, it's, it's, a, it's a decent enough fight. Um, just because at the end of the day, we, we reach this progress. For me, that was a career that kind of promised a lot and a lot of talk, but hasn't really delivered. Um, the his last fight was 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 a snooze fest. Um, the pay the fight was was never that great either until he got the stoppage. Um, and obviously, I think he he, he thought it was was it Tyrone McKenna, and then he he he'd been in the ring by that point by at least a year. So it hasn't really got the momentum going either. Now you've got Devin Haney coming up. Who will be interested to see how he looks. I think he'll look a lot fresher. It'll be interesting to see how his output is, stamina, especially going down the stretch. So um, a couple of wee question marks there. Um, I think I'm fancying Haney to be fair. I think Haney will probably win on points, but um, 
I just, I just want to see if if Progre will make make you know wee changes on the fly in that because I just think he can get a bit, a bit boring to watch, a bit repetitive, doesn't really change it up. Um, whereas Haney can probably grapple with him in that as well. So I'll probably go with Haney on points, but I'm I'm, I'm not feeling it at all, mate. I think this this has got the potential to be an absolute shit fight. Um, hopefully not, and it kind of ends the year with a, with a decent bang. But I love and hope. Yeah, I can't blame them for matching these two, but I do think that it has the potential to be a bit of a stinker. I've th thrown it out in the chat here. Uh, let us know what you guys are thinking. M. Lithgow 1983 says, I'm leaning towards Pro Grey. MB says, Fancy Haney on points. Yumi Yappy says, Heart says Pro Grey. Head says Haney. Haney will make it a stinker, says Yumi Yappy. Um, if you're listening after the, fact, after the fact on YouTube, throw your predictions in the comments how you think it's going to go and then we'll shame you publicly shame you next weekend when you get it wrong uh dominic no shame in you we were talking about this fight um last night and um, we we both watched this roberto diaz interview the former golden boy matchmaker and he had uh, he's very close to jorge linares had some interesting takes on it he said that haney has a real ability to slow opponents down maybe make them reluctant to throw so I would ask you off the back of that bit of analysis, can Progre afford, therefore, to step off and try and box with him? Or does he need to say, look, I'm a 140 guy here. I'm going to use my size, my strength, my power, try and make things ugly for you. Because if Diaz is right and Haney manages to, to lull him, snake charm him, slow the pace down, you've got to think Haney's just going to shut him down on points in that case. Yeah, and, and the, the thing that sort of came into my head when you were laying that out there was that... Um... You know, if, if Haney is adept at slowing guys down and getting them to fight at his pace, um, he may not actually have to, to exert himself too hard to do that because Progre is not... You don't associate Progre with someone who fights at a sort of very high tempo, high octane, uh, you know, output of punches. You know, he's, he's more of a... Uh, he's quite selective with his shots. He's... So, you know, it's interesting from, from that perspective. Haney's ability to do that may not be um it may not be called upon to the extent that it has done in previous fights. Um but I, I wouldn't uh, I can't really disagree with what Andy said. I, I would back Haney on points. Um I think also what, what you have to bear in mind here is the what the guys have discussed before after Progress last fight is his age. Um you know, I think he's is he thirty five. If he's not thirty five, he's not far off it. Um, he's thirty four, so he's 30, not far off it. Thirty four. He's been in some tough fights. The Taylor fight was a very tough fight. Um, so yeah, I would I would think he any. I can't see a stoppage. Um, I can see he any winning a, a a seven five or eight four decision. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, it's an interesting one, but um, yeah, I would go for go for Haney on points. The boys are throwing in their predictions again. Michael Thompson says, "Just think, Haney is extremely sharp and will keep Progre at a distance." Uh, Johnny says, "I could be way off, but I think Haney gets the stoppage. Regis passed his best and cut into one thirty-five would have taken a lot out of Haney um, <clears throat> in his last fight." Matty Haney, no, not Haney, the other one, Progre. Didn't look great against the tall, languid figure of Danielito Zoria. I think Pro Grey, to be fair, is a guy who fights up or down to the level of opposition. And if you can't get up for a Haney fight, then what can you get up for? Which leads me to believe that Zoria, he maybe overlooked him or felt the nerves or didn't feel he was the threat that he turned out to be. Well, he was a late opponent too, and that's not the style that Zoria fights in typically. That was mm -hmm. uh, pretty unexpected as far as that went. But despite all that, um, I think what would worry me if I was backing Pro Gray in this fight is in that Zaria fight, Zaria kept circling to Pro Gray's left, and he kept throwing the jab instead of, of just throwing a, a lead left hand and letting Zaria walk into it. And I would think that that would be his, is that Haney, Haney would probably want to move the other direction. Um, and, and, if he's not pulling the left hand with the guy moving into it, he's going to have a lot of trouble finding the left hand with the guy moving away from it. Um, so I, uh, you know, unless he's able to really close the distance, make it rough, he is the better puncher in this fight. Um, I, I just think it's going to be a long night for, for, for him. And my hunch is no matter who wins this fight, I have a feeling this doesn't go the distance. 
I, I think either Devin Haney is going to have a rude awakening going in against a legitimate puncher, a weight class North, or that uh, he's just going to run over a guy who might have just had one too many and, and is just not quite what he used to be. So I just not feeling this fight going the distance at this point. I think as well, Matty Haney is very risk averse. He ties you up, doesn't he? When you're getting close, those spidery arms, progress feet might not be quick enough to close the distance and get those shots off before Haney has jabbed him and grabbed him. I know Progre lets the shots go. Um, he is a powerful puncher and he is fast, but I just think that footwork, man, I just can see that range and that distance, Haney just grabbing him and bringing him in and, and demoralising him almost because Haney is quite, you know, he's a very defensively astute fighter. Yeah, I think just playing the role of spoiler, he could do that. And at that point, I don't think it's going to, it, the my stoppage prediction is probably out of play at that point in time. But... I don't know. We'll see. I, I, I think the question is, is, is one of the fighters in the other one's head and watching their, their face off. There's a chance that, um, that Progre is in Haney's head. And if he does that, he might be able to get Haney to fight on Haney. Like, um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see how that, that turns out. I, um, it, it could be a stinker, but it, it could be a, a kind of a surprise or for, for the end of the year. Kaiser Koba says if Progre can get the form he was in versus Zapeda, he stops Haney, but the miles may have tallied up now. I think if he has the form of the Zapeda fight, it makes it a lot more interesting. But I was going to say it's not guaranteed that he stops Haney, but then I was thinking Haney was um, hurt, wasn't he, by Linares? And someone who can hit the, the trigger quite quickly and catch him unawares has the potential to hurt him. And Progre can do that. I just hope he doesn't stand off and admire his work too much. Uh, Rob, final one to you. Uh, Size-wise, I think Haney will be more comfortable at the new weight. He was killing himself. Progre's got to be active, though. As I said before, he can't wait, sit waiting for that one big shot. He's got to throw punches in bunches, but that isn't really his style. It's, an, it's a really interesting fight, even though it's not like an appealing fight to the wider public. But from, a, you know, we're the hardcores, and even our, we're like so fucking cynical and sceptical these days. We're only looking for big fights. But this is a, a good fight, I think. Haney is in a difficult position because he did look dead at the weight in the la in the second Cambosis fight. It was like fucking an interview with a vampire at the fucking pre-fight press conference. Like and Lomachenko, a lot of people most people thought he lost the Lomachenko fight. So he doesn't get a lot of kudos in the boxing world because he was Gmail champion and all that. Like and people are now like it's it's mad how Joel Gallagher said, you know, about chip paper and all that, like after one of his fights, I think it was a, a rider fight and Caleb Smith, like, oh, that'll be chip paper tomorrow. But everyone was up in arms, like Lomachenko was robbed, Lomachenko was robbed. And now, now like, the perception is more, well, Haney beat Lomachenko, he beat the man, he beat the man. Now he's going up to 140. He doesn't knock anybody out anyway at 35. So going up to 140, you can't imagine he's going to turn into this knockout artist when he's fighting naturally bigger guys. So I think that's going to go against him. And I think he's in a difficult position because if he wins and he doesn't look good, people are going to be constantly fucking hitting him with a barrage of fucking he's not good or he's not what he says he is or he's not what they say that uh, they are from him and the dad's perspective and that. Like, But I think Haney can win this fight on the stick. Um, I think Progre might be slowing down a little bit, but I think Progre will be there to fight. I think Progre believes he can beat Haney. Um, I think he thinks he's an all-around better fighter that probably hasn't had the same opportunities as Devin Haney. And um, I believe he'll take it to him, but I just think Haney can win this off the stick, but I don't expect him to look good, if that makes sense. I think it'll be a stinker, yeah. Well, interesting you say that, Rob, actually. You mentioned about it being a stinker, maybe getting a barrage of abuse. This just question just come into my head, actually. Do you think there's a chance Haney could win, but he could come out of it probably not worse off than Shakur did against De La Santos, yeah, but like getting get a, like load, a load of stick? Like that. Like, I feel like yeah. that he, he gets a lot of stick anyway. Like the Linares fight, he got caught late on. You know the Gmail Championship, the throwing the stacks of money in the air, the persona that you know Eddie saying he's the next Floyd. I'll never lose to a white boy himself. Like he doesn't endear himself to people at the best of times. And for a guy who hadn't done a lot in the sport, he had a lot to say. He took his opportunity, beat Cambosis out of sight in the two fights, and had a close fight with Lomachenko. I personally thought he lost the Lomachenko fight, but I'm not mad at him being the guy that's the the main currency now as he moves on. Lomachenko's kind of had his time in the sport. Um, and I want to see him in big fights with the likes of Garcia, the likes of Tiafimo Lopez, the likes of Shakur Stevenson. But he has to do it. I, did, I think I feel like for Haney, there's a night where he has to actually put the fucking foot on the pedal and do it, like stop someone, beat someone out of sight so good that 
people are getting out of their seat when he's fighting. And I just don't think he has that style. I think he's good enough. I think he's fundamentally capable. I think he's good technically. I think he's good off the jab. But I do think he has weaknesses and I don't fancy I don't ever see him be the top guy the top top guy at 35 to 40 when he's there. I just I just think the other guys are a little bit better. I think like Tank is too hot for him. I think I think there's ten, there's you know, I think against Tank Davis there's times where he could look really, really good, but I just think Tank could catch him eventually, like with his with his head in the air or something. I just don't think he's gonna be ever be the top guy between 35 and 40. But he has to do something. I think he has to make a statement in one of the fights for to make people believe a believer in Haney. Like, yep, we need to see some believers. The Doctor FMG is a bit of a believer. He says Progray looked out of sorts in his last fight. Haney by upwards of two rounds. Uh, Progray's a geezer, says Michael Thompson. Well, I hope so. Uh, Kaiser Cobra says Progray better be coming to create room on the inside, punching with the free arms, etc. I don't want him just letting Haney smothering him for a lopsided decision. That could well happen, Kaiser. I'm worried about that too. I'm not that worried. A little bit worried. Uh, MB says Regis is a strong body puncher and Haney is coming up in weight. Yep, that's a good point. Uh, Haney's a good a good body puncher as well, though. So you never know. Right. I think that is all we've got on that one. Everyone seems to put their... The undercard. In. Oh, yeah, the undercard, of course. Yeah. Oh, God. Sorry, Matt. Eh? I knew yeah, there was something a... I was forgetting. Who have we got? Montana Love, yeah. isn't he on it? Yeah, not the not the greatest undercard ever, but Liam Perel Montana Love is another is an interesting fight. Montana Love in uh, with another Australian puncher, um, so that'll be an interesting one. I think Perel's probably got to be favored in that one. Um, Andy Cruz uh, taking on Giovanni Strafon, who I feel is a late notice replacement because I thought he was supposed to fight somebody else on there, Tenahara mm. or something. Something right. like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Strafon decent for a late notice replacement. Definitely doesn't have an amateur style, so he could probably confuse Cruz or you know give him some weird moments in there but you got to think of maxi hughes box circles around strafan that andy cruz should probably be able to do similarly um and then also you have ebony bridges on there also against a uh, late replacement mio yoshida who was active uh, only a month ago in a losing effort um so uh no great um one's a fight on that one but i think andy cruz we're all curious about him only a second professional fight you know uh, olympic gold medalist great fighter in the amateurs and the peril love fight i i think uh definitely uh uh could be uh, an entertaining fight and uh you know potentially a coin flip as far as the uh the winner uh, just sliding into chicks with dig territory briefly matty not bridges against yoshida not interested in that but the new vivian obanoff three and oh brazilian beatrice ferreira AKA the beast, the beast I'm already on board <laughs> <laughs> could have a future. She's going in against destiny to sweet Jones. So there you go. <laughs> could be a good uh, one. You never know. That could be, that could be another exciting fight. It could still the night. Anything is possible. <laughs> destiny has the young fella turning up ringside. Don't she? Destiny's <laughs> child. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear, that could be a good one. Uh, anything on the undercard, Andy, that takes your fancy? It'll be good to see Andy Cruz out, I suppose. And Strafon is a bit of a step up for his second fight. Do you remember he banjoed James Tennyson back in the day? Mm, vividly, mate, to be fair. Um, yeah, I'm, 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 I suppose the Paro love fight might be decent. Um, Chebenese, oh, ah, no, I'm not bother with that one, unfortunately. Yeah, I suppose Andy Cruz, oh, I'll watch that purely because... We'll see how far as Cuban will go before it falls to pieces for him. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. I've been to, I just wanted to, want to see these Cubans really in a real proper gut check fight and that, see if they can battle through it because I'm trying to think the last one actually that's come through and sustained something. Is it the guy at super middleweight, Morel, is he Cuban? Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah, he's a problem for anyone. He's brilliant, I think. Well, like again, like Andy said, like he is. I agree that he's a problem, but you want to see him. You want to see someone put up a bit of stubborn resistance to see what, see what they're going to be like in the face of. Yeah, adversity. I suppose you yeah, Bossinuli did to a point, but he was just like a punch bag at the end, wasn't he? Yeah, but I do I, like I, I do like a look of him. Like I think yeah. I'd like to see him against Plant. I think that's a fair fight. Yeah, that's a good fight actually. Uh, or, or or what about Demetrius Android? Maybe. No? I think Android's going back down to 160 if he keeps fighting. I think he'll pack it in, to be honest. Hope so. From your lips to God's ears. You never know. What did you think, Dominic, of that Benavidez Android fight last week? Thought uh, thought Benavidez very impressive. Very impressive. Um... Dominic, do your Andrade doing DMX impression. 
that's that's one, that's one that I'm not. I haven't even. I've never even tried that one. <laughs> never even tried that one. You go ahead, Rob. You go ahead and fire away with that one. You was trying Henry right. Kissinger impressions last night. Uh, do, do you want to hear my Henry Kissinger? My, my, my yeah, absolutely. My brother-in-law. My brother-in-law was my brother-in-law was singing my praises earlier. Well, we're out right for dinner, Rob, and he says, uh, "You should order your dessert and Henry Kissinger's Henry Kissinger's Basso Profundo." So here it goes. He goes the the, the, the fundamentals. Hi, Lord. Hi, Lord. Hi, Lord. I need I need to. It's 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 all difficult whenever you're put on the spot, isn't it? That's the flipping. Where's Ahmed getting back on? <laughs> <laughs> it's, we, we, need, we need people who can perform and drop an act. It looks, it looks a lot easier than it is this fucking box. Get them super chats in the fucking. This is that fucking amateur over here, you know. It's Fuck called. On, it's, it's called fucking on demand as well, man. So fucking come on. Someone well, put that once, Rob, ages ago in the reviews. It's oh, it's not bad that that podcast for something that's just thrown together. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> cheeky cons. <laughs> Sorry, he, Dominic. Go ahead. He was all, he was always he was always as exasperated uh, Kissinger that he, whenever he wanted to phone someone in Europe, you know, he, he knew when he wanted to phone Moscow or phone Beijing, he, he had a number. He knew who who to who to call. It was very stri- simple, very straightforward. But because of Europe, there was all these different countries. You know, there was no one center that he could call. He he got very exasperated, and he he sort of turned around to one of his aides one day and he says, "Who do I call when I want to call Europe?" <laughs> Who do I call when I want to call Europe? That was a brilliant Bob Aaron, man. I fucking love that, man. I think that's how every Cambodian hears Henry Kissinger's voice in their mind. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. Didn't expect us to go there tonight, but they... Danny Young says I need to get on and do my Zippy and George. Wait, it's probably when you think back. I, I shouldn't say it. Let's get on to the belly of the week. Bunk, Have bungles, I missed anything else? Money, money, like, <laughs> going around that big suit all day. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Have I missed anything else, boys, or is that it? Yeah, that's like it, I said, there's a bunch. There's a bunch of guys in some random fights here and there. I don't, some televised, some untelevised. Kind of a weird week if you really explore the box rec schedule. So just keep your eye out. You never know what might be popping up on a streaming service or on YouTube. Brilliant stuff. Let's get on to belly of the week. He'd be then, fucking paying for it anyway. Whatever it is, he will. He loves Fuck the payment. He loves the payment. The zone. Shout it. We're coming to the zone in belly of the week. Let's have a quick rundown. Who's here? Episode five five one. Rob Kelly is here. Dominic, aka Henry Kissinger, is with us as well. Matty Di Gialonardo and Andy Patterson. I'm Steve. We've nearly made it to the two hour mark. Talking of the zone, last night they were live on air. As someone put this in the notice chat, they were live on air. Just started the show, but unfortunately, someone didn't get the memo. Let, let's find out. <laughs> While young prospect Cameron Bong is quickly back in the ring following two impressive victories after his professional debut just eight weeks ago. I am buzzing for tonight and I'm delighted to be joined by Andy Lee and Jamie Conlon, who of course has not only been watching over his brother Michael, but also helped put tonight's show together. Jamie, how are you mate? Um, what a, what a card, top to bottom, room for a really special night, right? Most definitely. Um, obviously, mate, they'll come back, they get back as we've, we've named it, is, is the big hailing, but there's been some fantastic fights on the card, and we're, we're, we're treated to the, the, the host of Irish boxing. No, that's the only one, yeah. <laughs> Fucking amateur, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Honestly, a fuck Someone should sue them. <laughs> <laughs> what you're paying for, Matty. We'll get copyrighted for that now, by the way. Oh, I probably. Like, <laughs> that, that was like Shit. hurting cats. <laughs> <laughs> you bastards, the zone are going to send us to the river. Fuck me. <laughs> I'll have to trim that one out. That was funny, though, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you're a man. So he's dead serious as well when he's standing on the fucking spot, will you? Oh, you can you imagine it, eh? Well, we need to send someone out there to fucking sort that out. We'll send it all after they with their fight. It's here after you get that fucking sorted out, you old bastard. Oh, we're going to smell the pish as well. <laughs> oh, poor Arthur. Anyway, moving on over to Tim Box. Push some pro boxers around there, old man. <laughs> yeah. 
Holy shit! Uh, there's context to this one, first of all, and here we are. Uh, Tim Boxeo is back on the scene, just in time for heavyweight debutant Guadalupe Quintana Dominguez, 206 pounds, and Leila Michelle Martinez, 215 pounds. Face off tonight in Ciudad Juarez, Mexico, live on YouTube. They are Ooh, 400 what? plus pounds of pressure. <laughs> as I, what? As, what as I said to Dominic Bagsby, the referee. <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> Martinez scored a second round stoppage win over Guadalupe when the corner of Dominguez throws in the towel in their heavyweight boat. So there you are. <laughs> two athletes in the prime of their lives, says Billy Boxing. <laughs> Throw us in two towels. <laughs> <laughs> the beach towel. <laughs> Come on, the girls. Imagine, man. From, that, this pick from the back, it just kind of looks like Antonio Margarito let himself go. <laughs> and Antonio Margarito wrapped the hands of the one that won. <laughs> it was footage, but I did I didn't wasn't able to cut it unfortunately. Well, but it send was. it on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How hard are you gonna have, are you? have a, a cheeky master knack later, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> it's on chicks with digs, L chicks with digs, chicas with digas. <laughs> <laughs> hosted, by, hosted by Maddie and Tim Boxeo. That would have that, that that sounded so much better than Razor Ramon's voice in my Chica. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a success. Oh, AP yeah. says this is what Nathan Gorman called my material. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan Gorman was taping your own shorts up, he was. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny! Oh dear. I just seen some of these. I just seen some of these comments there in the chat there about Crawford's wife. She'd smash you two of them up. In <laughs> Both on the same night, man. Get stuck into them. But me, that's crazy. Uh, anyway, talking to Gorman, we brought him up earlier. There he was. You saw this one, Andy, as well, didn't you? After the sixth round, the referee was fed up pulling up his shorts, so the corner man got the gaffer tape out. <laughs> in memory of the, of, of, of the late great. Oliver Smith, it's a fucking disgrace. <laughs> it was a fucking disgrace. Jesus oh, Christ! Dear. He was running around with sellotape all around his all around his shorts and his waistline, man. It was bizarre. It was funny. See, see when the, see when the decision came in, tape. It was like, well, it was like one of these situations. Ah, oh, well, you know, I tried my best. I took part. It's not the winning. It's to take part. You know, this what counts. Fuck off, man. Get the fuck out of here. Your shorts wouldn't even stay up, man. See what I'm saying about this guy, right? Like, I look at fellas like that went to the gym and all, right? I could not throw a punch to save their lives, but they went to the gym every day and it just could, like, they would have loved to be a fighter, but it just couldn't be a fighter. And this fella can be a fighter and he can't even get his shorts to fucking stay up without Caffer tape being fucking brought into the equation after round six. Give me a fucking break, man, will you? Like, just talk about wasted talent. Like, I know Dubois fucking beat him in that fucking... That was... A lot of people thought that was a 50-50 fight and Dubois gone on to fucking run Usyk close and this fella's having fucking silver tape holding up his shorts. <laughs> on, on Channel 5. Was oh, oh, on a was <laughs> on Channel 5 show. <laughs> fucking hell. Fine minds. It's go to the gym, man. Will you do yourself a favour? <laughs> Fuck's sake. Could have won that fight, like fuck's sake. They wanted you to win that. All you had to do was train, man. They wanted to fucking set it up for you to win. Jesus. Anyway. Yeah. I, I wish like... I really wish Oz was back for this, like to be honest with you. I want Oz's opinion on the fucking tape holding up his shorts. Come on, Ozzy, come back with the John Fisher content. And maybe the people's boxing championship boxing. <laughs> we are there's John with his card. <laughs> Is this what Don King flyers are reduced? That's to? what he was, yeah. Fuck's sake. Well, he's still putting on stack cards if I assume Wiggins oh. versus Howard. This is a w- Wiggins is real. Look, it says plus two more title fights, Rob. Oh, plus. Well, that's good. Fucking Casino Miami. I'd say it'd be a good time, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Then with the, oh, a lot of Cubanos in supporting Perez in Miami. I think that's a good fucking, that's a good Saturday night out, to be honest with you. Better than Booty only on a Saturday night, that one. <laughs> he's big, he's big pals with, with Trump, isn't he, Don King? Don is, yeah, absolutely. I think he's big buddy. You see, if Trump gets here, Marty, if Trump gets re-elected, you'll have the Don as your flipping ambassador to the UN or something, waving his wee flags. I, I don't know if uh, Trump uh, gets to the next election without going to jail, or that Don King makes it without dying. Um, well, if he needs advice, if he, if, if he needs advice, if he needs advice about avoiding the pen. There's no better man to go to than the Don. <laughs> yeah, true enough. <laughs> Uh, talking of the titles there, Dominic, uh, we've got the NABA welterweight title, the vacant international lightweight title, 
and the Continental USA middleweight title. Now, you might have noticed at the Belfast show last night, I think it was a Jarko, was it, or Macomb were fighting for the WBA Continental Europe title. So that sounds like a good one. That sounds like a brick top special, that does. <laughs> oh, Continental but, Europe. Oh, but hold on, you guys are on an island and you said you didn't want to be part of Europe. How does that work? Say that again, Marty. So you, they're on an island and they didn't want to be part of Europe. So how does that work? What you mean in the referendum? Yeah, like I, shouldn't you be disqual disqualified from all that? Shouldn't it? I, I? I don't know. Well, I think I think in all, in, in all seriousness, I think the the boxing the, the the sort of sporting bodies are run by a different. Um, you know, you're still part of the European, you know, commission. Yeah, you're not going to let politics get in the way of the payday, <laughs> are you? For fuck's sake, well, man. Come they were to well, and, well, the fuck, and they realized if they didn't have fucking immigrants, they wouldn't have a fucking product. Back to the WBO global <laughs> title. Come on, Matty, you're taking us off the track here. Yeah, did they see that? Anyhow. That was uh, just on those titles. I think it was announced there during the week that the WBA. Um, are following the WBC's Bridgerweight thing by creating like a super cruiserweight division. Yep. I think I had that yeah, on here but, somewhere. But, yeah, saying. but different weights, and they're not even mm. calling it fucking Bridgerweight. They can't even like super agree to cruiserweight. Like, yeah, fucking stupid. A super exactly cruiserweight. What, exactly what boxing needs. I know. I, I thought I had that one cut, but I didn't. But you boys are throwing it in anyway, so we'll move on. Um, Michael Benson was tweeting out. I usually try to cut him out, but he's here. He says Javonta Davis now looks set to become the WBA lightweight world champion and a legitimate two-weight world champion as he will likely be upgraded from WBA regular belt holder after Devin Haney vacated all of his lightweight world titles. Javonta Davis quote tweeted, I don't want that shit. Because <laughs> 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 he can't use email, Rob, to receive it. That's the problem. <laughs> Good man, Javante. Do you think do you yes. think Gervonta controls his own account or do you think someone's doing that for him? I don't know, but he took a clip out of the Mayweather playbook last night, didn't he? And he fucking he he put up a shot of his new car and then followed by Ryan Garcia taking an E against him, like on the night Ryan Garcia fucking comes back like <laughs> so <laughs> learning from the best. I mean, a hell of a fighter making a lot of smart investments there. I think he does, Dom, because he likes a, a deletion, doesn't he? Gervonta he puts up some wild shit sometimes and deletes it afterwards. Yeah, I think he probably does. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's, he's a top-tier shit talker for sure. Yeah. Well, he's been beefing with King Roy anyway, and Garcia bit back at him and said, Javonta Davis will never give anybody a fair fight. He doesn't have the dog in him. Matty, doesn't have the dog in him. Uh, yeah, he's Pat, going to come Pat, back Pat, to Pat. Rudy comments at some point in the near future by Ryan Garcia, so he should shut his fucking mouth. Go back to the gym, back to the laboratory, as the, as the kids like to call it these days, and fucking work on his defence. Because that poverty shoulder roll that he's employing these last few, you know, or, or last night at least, that, that's going to end up with him flat on his back at one point. Look at Oscar's face on that photo, Andy, to the right. <laughs> he's like, ah, oh. I mean, he's, he's spotted some chica sitting, standing <laughs> on the by him. He's like, ah, oh, he's you'll be victim 500, possibly, you know. I think something's just touched the bloodstream. <laughs> Look at Tyson, man. Tyson's that. He wants to get in there. Eh? He's missing that. He's missing that fucking endorphin <laughs> release. It's getting rough and tough in there. Look at this. Here we are. Isaac Warrior Low and Prince Patel. Low says, end the year like I gonna start 224. Thank you for the support and message means a lot. No time to step with my family. Prince Patel. Prince Patel is bullying him a bit, isn't he, man? I don't like it. He says, what does no time to step with my family mean? Did he mean sleep? I wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> I didn't read that one before. <laughs> I didn't actually read that one. Know, did he? <laughs> it's a bastard, isn't he? Just... I love that shit, though. I can't lie. Two fellas, two fellas are verbally jousting and one is sharper than the other. Tough shit. You know what I mean? It's fucking... You get what you came for. Steve... Steve's like crying there about oh he's been bullied now. Fucking hell, Tyson Fury's <laughs> wife fucking slaughtered the guy, man. <laughs> so he was scrabble he's, a, he's scrabble champion, no <laughs> chance. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see your man from the Rage Boxing? Martin put up a good one as well. Isaac Lowe said he was going into some fight. <laughs> Martin says he's gonna go for the okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh there's some nasty bastards out there man Isaac we support you 
Uh, Oscar De La Hoya <laughs> excuse me, tweeted out during the week, I have to say that I'm really concerned about Ryan Garcia's state of mind, considering his history of mental instability, which he's documented himself. His current erratic behaviour shows he's clearly not focused on Saturday's fight. You won't take my calls, Ryan. I hope you're okay. That was Hello. the lead after, wasn't it? In fairness, right? Me now, I wouldn't even take Oscar De La Hoya's calls now. And like... <laughs> Would I'm you know? nobody. Do you know, not would. even not a chance. If I had Oscar's number what? right and he rang, ask Dominic, right? He can barely get me on WhatsApp. If Oscar fucking rang me, like, right? No chance. I'd be like, no, sorry, man. I'd take <laughs> it maybe liar. the first time. You fucking liar. I'd take it the first time, but I wouldn't fucking like. Uh, I, you take it the first time. You take it the first time just to get no one. I'd be like, no, no, fucking Oscar. Max, stop, man. Because what time in the morning would Oscar be ringing you, really? You know what I mean? Well, <laughs> to be fair... Ryan, you uh, won't take these 2 a.m. calls that I make it to you. <laughs> Rob, 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 to be fair, those 2 a.m. calls be coming into you at about 10 in the morning, so that seems reasonable. Yeah, yeah. West Coast, West Coast time. Give Oscar a chance, man. I'm not up at 10 in the morning. What's wrong, <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm a slave. <laughs> Uh, we were talking earlier about Rabizi Ramirez possibly fighting Luis Alberto Lopez, an old gad fresh from Kingston, Jamaica. Uh, has a, pronun a pronunciation of his own. Here's the gad. Obviously, um, Luis Alberto Lopez. Oh, see these guys. Man. I tell you what. I tell you what. She, she, she really kind of fucks me off, right? It's not their fault, but see when you get. Uh, you know, foreign speakers on, on English speaking television. So, like, take that, take that dickhead that does the Spanish football, for example. What's his name? Ba ba Balagun, whatever his fucking name is. Oh, Balagay. Aye. Yeah, so, aye. So, he actually, like, overpronounces. Like, and you get that dickhead that does a German football. He's the same fucking way, right? He speaks like a native. It does my fucking nothing. He's no <laughs> Spanish. He's fucking English. Just speak properly. <laughs> Luis Alberto. <laughs> imagine, no, imagine, the guy from the guy. Luis Alberto Ramirez. I'm like, so fucking. Imagine I'm pronouncing like a German name or like a <laughs> or like a whatever language you want to think of. Nelched, like, nelched. Like, Steve I, McLaren, like Steve McLaren when he was I in Amsterdam for six yeah. weeks, he's like, yes, yes, I am Luis. All we need to do is enjoy, enjoy Barton fucking French, ain't yeah. you? French fucking. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm, uh, I'm telling you, give me, uh, give me Luis Alberto Lopez uh, fighting somebody in Jamaica Alberto. with the dad on comms. <laughs> <laughs> fighting Kirkland Lang. <laughs> I, it was funny, Steve, last night, one of the guys, one of the others was asking plaintively why, you know, on the big screen when they showed Mick Conlon and all the fighters walking through the bowels of the Odyssey and uh, the zone or Eddie, they had like, there was no one in sight, but the, they insisted on having like one security guard on yeah. the shoulder of the fighter as they're walking that slow-mo walk yeah and and someone goes way to the hell there's no one near conlon way to need someone to walk on beside him and he says well the guard could be about to pop out of behind, <laughs> behind the corner and ask are they going to short is he going to have a short before he gets warmed up here the so guard uh, pops out when he's talking to mick conlon he's like see you mick by the way <laughs> 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 he'd be like he'd be like Brendan Behan or something <laughs> big Jerry Adams glasses instead of his normal glasses just for <laughs> a hard a hard job a hard job oh he's got to do that as me the guard man that'd be class the big solution Oh, what have we got here? Now, B. Jackson was getting in touch with Vic Glazer. He says, hey, Rick, have you ever considered passing on your business to a protege or someone that wants to do what you do in boxing, uh, <laughs> whatever that is, would probably give you much name recognition beyond your years. You get to leave a piece of what you built to someone. <laughs> and this, this guy must be a troll. And the sport gets a position boxing. And Rick says, yes, but it's such a business. You need so many facets of mind, personality, disposition, work ethic. Boxing knowledge, business savvy, be relentless and be streetwise. Where do you find that animal? Fucking work ethic. <laughs> Unrivaled. Fucking grifting arsehole, man. Fucking work ethic, my arse. Oh, dear. Good old Rick. What else have we got here? Um, there he is, looking happy as always, old Smigger. He's talking about Callum's chances against Arta Baturbia. He says they have three belts and be sitting there in a very, very good position. Paul discusses his brother Callum Smith's upcoming fight against Arta Baturbiev. The T-boy jumps in and says, cover up for 12 rounds and take a points loss like the Canelo fight. Oh, Andy, that's a bit of a low blow, isn't it? 
<laughs> he dared to be great. He, he set the blueprint of how to beat Canelo. Oh, mate, I remember Bellew coming out saying it was going to be the hardest fight and all that. And Callum was... The, the truth of the matter was I think he only trained eight weeks and it was to make weight, basically, or something along those lines. And all the fucking bigged up his chances and they gave him all, all the chance of the day. And what did they do? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And Paul, my, every time you see Paul, that's how he looks. It's like he fucking finds it really hard to smile for some reason. Uh, block boy okay. Smigger, Dominic. Sorry, Steve. You've been blocked by Smigger right here? Oh, a long, long time ago. I think I got you blocked as well one time. That's right, you did, yeah. Um, sorry about that, Steve. No, Your right. life's never been the same again. But, um, no, no. He's, he's rocking the Forge Dare Stout t-shirt there. You know, he's um, he's a lovely, lovely fella, Sal Smigger. The real, the real gone kid. <laughs> I'm not blocked uh, by anyone, only Steve Kim. He's the only one to block me, the fucking prick. No, the racist. <laughs> He was going on about people having agendas, and then I said something about fucking you have some neck talking about agendas. <laughs> and he yeah. fucking blocked me, and then he went at me after he blocked me. The fucker I couldn't even respond to it. He was calling me vanilla ice and all kinds of little shit. I love to run into Steve Kim, man. Oh my god. That was before you could even tell him about Agenda 21. Son of a bitch. <laughs> exactly. Don't get me excited. See, see the best thing. Oh, listen. Data. See, off, the best thing you would I've actually hear. Another rabbit hole. I won't even get into it here because we'll all be fucking bombed off the fucking <laughs> platform. <laughs> fucking Interpol. I see, I see uh, uh, talking of the Smiggers there. Beefy was, he's been in Dublin last week and he was in Belfast last night. You, he was, yeah. You, you'd be forgiven for thinking he was trying to stay away from Liverpool, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was that again, Matty? What was she telling us about him? What was he doing? What? What was he up to, Matty? Who? Liam's Beefy Smith. You said he was up to something. You said he was throwing sausages a bit somewhere. And lightness, Marty. And lightness. Well, God, the, you guys saw that. Well, Andy would have seen it. So from what I saw in the in the post, he was banging some mob guy's girlfriend. So then he went to the can of hands for protection. And then he started banging some other mob guy's girlfriend. And then his house got fucking torched. <laughs> That's and what then, I, uh, but but I you, heard. But did, but, it was know, but did you know then question his, <laughs> his, his, his performance in the rematch against you, Bank? Did he go noble, Matty? Ooh. Well, isn't did that he, an did interesting thing? Did he go noble because he was, that was a non performance of sorts? You know what I'm saying? Well, I'll tell you what. Robert yeah, conspiracies, you know. So well, my dad was speaking of, I got, I inherited all my conspiracy fucking tendencies from my dad, who was the fucking original conspiracy theorist before David Icke. But he reckons that <laughs> the fucking, the Yanks threw a fucking heap of women at fucking Randy Turpin when he went to America for the rematch against Ray Robinson. <laughs> he reckoned Turpin was shagged out. That's what he <laughs> Shagged out looking for a hand, eh? <laughs> See, the other fucking, they stitched him up, they brought him over 60 days, they threw women at him, they threw him at him. I say, how the fuck do you know this? No, even internet. How the fuck do you know that? Like, that's a good one, extreme. I like that one. That's, that's yeah. good, that. Oh, he was shagged out, shagged out. <laughs> uh, America, all they have are Protestant whores. <laughs> but it's mad, you think about the generations that we, th we think back, like 25 years, we're talking about Holyfield and that. Like, I remember being, and I know this is value of the week, like, but I remember being like in the 80s, talking to me, uh, my dad's sister's husband, like, and he had been at the fucking Randy Turpin Robinson fight, like, but it was only like fucking 30 years ago. You get me? Like, it was only like mm. he was talking like 30 years back, like, and he was telling me vividly, like, the story of the fight and all that, like, madness. Anyway, go ahead. No, that's good. Um, so, what you're saying, uh, uh, Dominic, he's been told to uh, lay low from, from Liverpool, is that right? So, what's he doing there in Ireland, man? That's the worst place to fucking lie low. What the fuck? Well, speaking of me, dad, he worked in England in the in the sixties or whatever, and used to be having banter with the English lads or whatever about the political situation in the north. <laughs> some fella allegedly said, "You shall never get back to those six counties." And someone said, "Well, we do you a deal. Give us back the six counties, and we give you back Liverpool." <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! Right, right. Last one. So, Laser, Laiza. 27. And what's what's Ian saying there, Steve? Oh, um, I don't know what his name's saying. In the top, the the he's, he's reminding you. I think. Oh, yes. Um, the big fella? Yeah. Uh, Ames was nominating his pal, uh, Donna Corby. Um, and I can't remember the story, to be honest with you, to tell anybody. <laughs> to tell you. So that's a bit of a wasted one. <clears throat> it was something at a, at a concert, Ames. I can't even remember, to be honest with you. So you'll have to re-enlighten me on that one. In the meantime... 
Uh, Loiza has been nominated. She says, Benavidez doesn't have the pop or skills to earn Canelo's respect. He's just a volume puncher. Uh, that's nominated by Hamid Boxing. It was a long night, times, man. You can hear that I can barely speak. But we got to quarter past ten, so we've done all right, didn't we? Right. I'll give my voice a rest quickly on this one. MJP giving us some advice. She's getting old. Hey, she's, not, she's not liking it. <laughs> and this, I don't know whether they got this from TikTok we... <laughs> or Instagram or something. Is it is Michelle? Can we talk about something that I'm sure many of you guys watching this can relate to? I have started reading things like this. I have always had great vision, but only until the last like maybe four or five months. I'm starting to read like, like the fine print is a little bit too small. Why is everything a little blurry? It's like, no matter how much you prevent it, age just creeps up on you. I thought oh it was my what gosh. is how she really leans into her position? Jesus Christ. I was, do you know what I was thinking about the whole time I was watching that clip is, how long would I actually tolerate this in real life? Like, not fucking as long as that clip went on. I know that's like, <laughs> fucking shut up, man. What? Fellows are in everything to you, man. Jesus. Lovely woman. She's doing her best. We wish her well. Yeah, absolutely. Speak for yourself. She's, yeah, what's she saying? What's he like? What's he saying is really profound. Like what you're, you know, what I mean, your eyes like gets worse as you get older. Well, what are you? You're know, like forty something. Like fucking, what did you think was going to happen? Fuck's sake. Yeah, well, the, I, I, go on, Dublin. I know how she would sort out the the, the Israel Gaza crisis, don't we? <laughs> and you could. Hey, I, I I just want to nominate some of the guys in the chat for for the value of the week for saying that basically that they wouldn't uh, hit that. What the fuck is wrong with you? Matty, <laughs> <laughs> have a bit of respect, man. This isn't chicks with dig material. No, this is like my god, like what, like are you guys seriously getting better offered to you on a daily basis? <laughs> you walk into the pub and the hottest chick there ends up leaving with you. No, no, you drink a couple of vodkas and you go home with some random fucking skank that's just maybe a six on her best day when she has two hours to prep. You know, like, speak for yourself. Fucking yeah. <laughs> no, Golden filters, man. Your woman probably looks like Jimmy Corkill in real life. <laughs> No, she, yeah, she's a, she's a nice looking woman, and like and like she says stupid shit. It's always like, so God. sexist, buddy. Well, it was so progressive over here. <laughs> <laughs> just, just just established, established established boxing journalist who's treating her like a piece of meat. Fucking uh, oh, it's, it's what a world we live in, Rob. What a world we live in. <laughs> Chicks with no dignity, says the Doctor FMG. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a better podcast, by the way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, you'd be willing to co-host that one with me, wouldn't you, Rob? <laughs> Without some insights. <laughs> right, <clears throat> excuse me, that's all the ones that I've got. Andy, what have you got for us? Oh, I'm just thinking that the show would basically be like calling people and whoever answered is clearly someone without dignity. <laughs> like, if they're taking our calls, well, you qualify. I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> Go on, Andy. What you got? a couple for me. Uh, mm. The Kaj Soha, I think he's head of sports or something like that at Channel 5. He tweeted it. Nathan Gorman back in action, Channel 5 tonight, 10 pm. And Tyson might turn up as well to please share to help support live and free boxing. I tell you what, mate, keep putting that shit on. There'll be no fucking free boxing for you, I can guarantee you. There'll be no job for you either, mate. You're booting your ass. Skid row. <laughs> Absolute shambles, man, that fucking card Friday night. <laughs> what else we go here? Um, why oh, that Rizicki, sorry, Ryan Rizicki against Turadola fight was £20 pay per view, sorry, $20 mm -hmm. pay per view, 20 That's Canadian right. dollars. That is actually yeah. for two minutes of action. Under uh, I don't know how much that is in real money, to be fair. Mm, uh, one, uh, one for O'Hara Davis for visa issues, uh, one for uh, one for Eddie Hearn. There was a great caption actually with Eddie on IFL's Twitter account. It looked like he looks like he's a washed out man, like he just looks jaded. Sums him up right now, and that the whole thing's going to fucking pot. So, uh, one for the old Edward, and I'll finish off with this one Tony Bellew <laughs> on uh, having a wee kind of like run the campfire chat. Bigging up his his performance against our man Sasa Yuzik, uh, according to Tony, 
It usually takes music three rounds to download the data. Yes, he said those words. Oh, they downloaded man, the data to figure freak. it out. And, it, and it took, but this is the point, it took music eight rounds to download that data to figure out Tony. And then he knocked him out <laughs> in round nine. Oh, fucking. Fuck. He got up at six. He got up at six. six, mate. Fuck, I, six months later. Fucking <laughs> Jesus. So one, he one got up at six. You. Absolutely concussed. He doesn't fucking put that pad in. Well, he probably can't remember. Some joker said last night that in round six, Conlon was downloading the data. <laughs> Fucking brutal, aren't they? Eddie, should you remember Eddie had to go over but Billy's, Billy's head was sort of sagging on the bottom rope and Eddie got up out of his seat and sort of had to cradle his head, you know, before he before he sort of turned around. Like, you know, it's just up at, but up at six, like, up at six. Like Mag and Rocky IV. <laughs> Gillian uh, White in Gibraltar. <laughs> Just on the Hearn comment again, actually, I think it's just uh, also what's jaded them as well. Obviously, I'd be calling getting knocked out, and that was uh, the fact that uh, Robert Smith of the board came out in talk sport and basically just put the fucking exclamation and the dagger right through Ben against Eubank, put the fucking ex- the Kai Bosch right on it. It's no happening. Edward, you'll need to take it abroad, mate. Uh, good luck with that. You and Connor Hen, all the best to you. Good evening, Edward. Uh, it was it was some watch, and but to be honest as well, Eddie. Just I, I know you have your wee fucking minions listening in, mate. You're crying there on IFL last night about how Robert Smith is amiable to you. He'll say hello to you. It shows you'll shake your hand, but you'll no sit down and have a conversation with you. No fucking wonder, mate. You went away and got the lawyers involved straight away. You got the dogs on the case. You started throwing the fucking shade about. All this type of other shit, and what happens? You put it into the fucking hands of the lawyers. So no wonder the guy doesn't want to fucking talk to you. Would they even trust you anyway? Would they? Because what would happen is you would just turn up in the fucking front of a camera about two hours later, evening cooks, and fucking just spill your guts as you normally do. Start fucking just mouthing off again. So uh, probably best that he doesn't want to talk to you anyway. Eddie. He kind of he keeps himself safe. You know, but he didn't want Eddie fucking mouth off the background about all this legal stuff and that as well. So bad week for Eduardo. Bad week for Eduardo, Matty. A good week for you. Any value of the weeks? Yeah, I think I'll have to pull one from the Boxing Nutters Messenger Group. And stay with me here because it starts off on a very, very bad note. There there was a, a, a rape in Brighton. And unfortunately, Eubank is under investigation as uh, being the perpetrator of that rape, uh, which is terrible. Rape is wrong. And uh, at which point uh, somebody said, aren't there a bunch of gays in Brighton too? At which point Ricky Graville said, yeah, probably have to bring my own pint glass if I go down that way. So I got to give a value of the week to Ricky Graville for thinking if he went to Brighton, he might be a rape victim. I just wonder if maybe Billy <laughs> Joe Honor's asking about the gay comments, you know. What happens in the Nutter's chat? Fuck's sake. <laughs> Ends up over here. Sorry, that was... You want to keep a secret? Don't fucking tell Maddie anyway. <laughs> Fuck's sake, man. <laughs> Johnny tight lips over like, here. Not Dale, can you nothing. block me? <laughs> <laughs> Danny Young held, Danny Young said held the bit bell you held held up at nine by four people. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember do you remember the post fight interview by the way when Tony Tony's Tony's getting interviewed, he's like ah, Alexander. Alexander. Oh yeah. He was he was like totally fucking concussed and I'm like Alexander. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, any more, Matty? No, actually, no, no. Dominic, any from you? <laughs> no, my, my one was going to be the what Andy mentioned about Robert Smith and Eddie and just all, all that there stuff. Um, you know, Eddie, Eddie saying that he, he he sort of seems to forget that there's a process that everyone who's failed the test has to go through. These things don't get resolved by having a wee a wee sort of fair side shot with with Robert Smith when you can sort of try and put pressure on him in private, you know, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, but, can but, you, um, can, yeah, but can you imagine that, you know, what, what we'd actually say about that, if Eddie and Robert Smith will have a quiet chin wag, where's, where's the fuck, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the word I'm looking for, actually. Where's the transparency there? You exactly. Know, can you imagine, can you imagine the fucking, some of these people, these fucking minions talking about it? Oh, what's the day having a private conversation? That's, that's, that's suspect as fuck. And I, I would say it was suspect as fuck as well, especially all the legal shenanigans going on in the background. See, this is this type of shit that Eddie likes to do and that throw out these wee fucking comments and try and make it look like he's amiable to a wee 
chat to get this resolved. That type of thing. That just shows you it's a, it's a desperate move. It's, just, it's like the time, for example, when Ben got caught with the B sample or whoever it was, and it came back. He said, um, but ultimately, you know, the sample would be tested by a specialist. Wait a minute. The fucking the sample that came back positive was tested by a specialist. So this, you know, these fucking wee things that he throws out there, and that just the fucking misdirection. It's coming back to Rush now, actually, because they say you can actually see it. He's actually getting jaded to fuck. Uh, I'm going for Eddie this week. Yeah, well, uh, I see many. So, uh, Rob, what about you? What you, what you got? You're on mute, Rob, Rob. Any nominations, please. <clears throat> can we hear him? Can you hear me, Andy? Yeah? I can hear you fine, mate. Rob's still on uh, Rob, mute. Rob, hurry up. I'm trying to watch fishing on television. Yeah, I need a piss That's all right. Rob's maybe been abducted by aliens. We'll go through these quickly. So <clears throat> we had the DAZN shenanigans at the beginning. We had Gad's pronunciation. We had MJP complaining about her age. We had the two fine athletes. Uh, we wish them well. Uh, this is an athlete as well on Channel 5. He might turn up on a donking show if he's lucky. Uh, Javonta Davis going in on the WBA. Uh, King Roy fires back. Prince Patel and Isaac Lowe going back and forward. Oscar De La Hoya is worried about Garcia. Uh, Rick Glazer is letting us all know what he does in boxing, sort of. Uh, we've got uh, Schmigger there looking all happy with himself. And Benavidez and all the other nominations as well. Andy, are you dead set on Eduardo this week? Yeah, mate, I think it's been an awful week. You know, as I say, it's just typical Edward. Just they know when to keep his mouth shut, loves to run it, and then when it comes home, he roosts sometimes. It's always good to see him get served with some receipts. So, yeah, go for Eddie. Okay. Uh, Dale says, Matty, you should adopt the no wearing policy. And wearing what? Like Porky, if you want to go past 10k subs. We don't want to go past 10k subs. That's when they start watching you, Matty, isn't that right? I think they're always watching us, Steve. No one's watching us. That's the problem. I think there's only 12,000 in the chat. Sons of bitches. And then Rob won't, Rob won't even answer us. No, exactly. He's had enough. He's put the phone down. I'm here. I'm here. What's the crack? Pay the week. Pay <laughs> the week nominations. Oh, I uh, know. I don't have any. No, I don't have any. None for me. I'm on the Nazi this week. None for me Nothing this week. Nothing for Moz. Nothing for Moz. <laughs> Who are you going I... for then, Rob? Um, I think nothing sums up the current shit show uh that boxing is uh than the fucking nathan gorman having his fucking trunks held up by gaffer tape on fucking terrestrial television on a friday night like <laughs> when the misfits are taking over like i probably would rather watch the misfit show i probably would rather watch that fucking ifl clip of somebody saying they fuck somebody um than watch nathan gorman have his fucking shorts held up and he's what was he like 270 or something 270 bills or something 296 mm. 296 <laughs> Lord Jesus, like, yeah. come on, man. I'm Someone said he's at always that low since his last fight. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Shameful, like, so probably shot or advise that warrior low actually for his fucking before his breakfast just on the morning. <laughs> one for Eddie, one for Gorman. Sorry, Matty, back to you to make your pick, please. I think I gotta go for uh Gorman taping his pants up like he's Rick, Ricky Graville at a pub in Brighton. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you. Uh, M. Lithgow says, Misfits takes it more serious than Gorman. Dominic, who are you going for this week? I'll, 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 honourable mention to, to Tony Belly in the jungle about the Easter side. I thought that was very good, but uh, I'll probably go for Eddie. Eddie as well. Two for Eddie. Two for Gorman. I'm going to split it as pick number five, and I'm going to go for Gorman as well, man. I thought that was funny. He doesn't take himself too seriously, does he? He comes in, he has a laugh. He gets on Channel 5 in the night round and he loses to a Latvian or a Ukrainian. He gets his, his shorts taped up with a bit of gas. Absolute tape. banter, man. That's what boxing is all about. So get many, back. many of that on Channel 5. Yeah, that's more Cali Sauerland needed, Andy. That's what I say for now. Nathan Gorman, congratulations. You are the Bell of the Week winner for episode 551. And that is where we shall leave it. We managed to make it through, didn't we, boys? Let's have a look at the Super Chatters, actually, before we get out of here. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Alex Smith. He renewed his Patreon pledge. He, I thought he'd gone, but he came straight back to us. Patreon.com forward slash Boxing Asylum. Shout out to him. And the Super Chatters, who are they? Who were they? Johnny Nelson, Johnny Horscott Nelson, 79p. Ryan Deal threw in some money as well. So did Emily Lithgow in 1983. 
and Paul Raftery threw in £20. Shout out to him and shout out to all of you for listening as well. And everyone who supports us, hit the like on the way out, the subscribe button, and we might do a post-fight pod, or we might not, thanks to Andy. He's come on tonight. Matty's come on as well. Rapping Rob Kelly and Dominic, and also Ahmed came on earlier. He might be back. I've been your host, Shout out, Shout out to Ahmed. Tough debut Matty for Ahmed tonight, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. But he did his best. He'll be back. He'll be back. Fighting, pitching. Matty will be in the hot seat. He'll be back. Episode 552. A steam train wouldn't stop him. See you all same time, same time, same place next week. And bye. We'll never forget. Yeah, I think that's good about me. Go to Edinburgh! We want to be honest, yeah. Crying like a little bitch. I've never met a fucking soul that can fight me. I, I fell asleep. I fell asleep. You're a fucking bum. You're a fucking asshole. Drunk or fucking stealth skin. But allegedly, Oscar Rivas has, 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 failed, has failed a test. Seven year old. Seven year old. I will fucking smash. Fuck you. I hope you fucking die. Be safe. I love boxing science. Simple as that.